Hi everybody, welcome to FNS Wrestling Podcast episode 93. I'm your host back in the basement with my co-host and teenage son Jack. Say hello. Hi. That's not hello. Speaking okay? of 90... Follow my simple instructions. How dare you? Speaking of 93, I want that Elite Tough Rollins, which is Elite 93. Yes. So we're already talking about figures. We're saving it to the end, man. Figuring it out is the last segment, not the first segment. But yeah, we are back down here to talk about some more wrestling. I don't know what uh, would we get into this week. Yesterday, in our bantering here, yesterday we went out, right? Took your brother to a birthday party and yeah. went on a mini figure hunt. Didn't really see anything too exciting, right? No. no what was no, the best no, thing no. you saw? You were contemplating buying a junkyard jog just for the collar. I need to <laughs> find... Um... I need to find like a Toys R Us with like, they have Legend Series Elite, Elite Series Twelve, and they have Junker Dog. I needed to find Junker Dog and the red, cause the red tights. The thing is the same one. Then there's a Chase variant and the blue tights. I need to get both of those. You need to. And then or you combine will cease the dog to collars, right? Because I'm not gonna buy two of the same one unless I sell one. But I don't even know if that'll work. So you didn't really buy anything yesterday other than some pistachios, right? <laughs> on her trip yeah, pistachio. Oh, there was the debit uh, vending machine. Yes, you found the, the vending machine with debit for all the drinks. Quite fascinating at Costco. Yes, that was interesting. What else is new? Our pool opened, but it is still at, I just checked, at about 45 degrees. So won't Usable? Any... No, not usable. Nobody will be going in that for a little bit, but at least that's a sign of summer is on the way, right? I guess. Mm-hmm. What else exciting happened this week for you? Anything? Uh, you had a science yeah. test? Yeah. Went okay? Yeah. Nice. What did I do this week? Nothing really. It was know. a pretty uneventful week for me. Um, I don't know. Anything else to talk about? Um, it's hard because we talk to each other all day every day. So when we sit down here, it's like, yeah, I don't know. It's what, like what else is new really? There's not really much interesting. You didn't watch any interesting movies? You're... I finished WandaVision, that flaming pile of crap. Why do you watch it again if you know you don't like it? I don't I, that's understand. actually the first time I watched WandaVision completely. All the way through? Because it's so horrible. The first time I tried to watch I made it two episodes in. Um, but just because you're a completist, you watched it all ahead of Doctor yeah, Strange? Yeah, I've been watching... I got into the... I, I'm almost complete the MCU. I watched right. Loki, which is six episodes, and I watched What If, which is their anime one. And then I watched stupid wandavision it was good because after endgame which is that big three-hour movie right. i thought i had to watch wandavision which sucked but then there was actually two shows i had to watch before wandavision so i got to do what i do which is procrastinate um that is now i'm like halfway through maybe just past halfway okay i'm almost done shang chi which yeah. is pretty good and then i get to watch the second tom holland spider-man which i really like a lot good um i'll get to use my blu-ray for that um and then there's, I think I have like a couple other shows and then a couple movies. Nice. And you just have to watch all of it. You can't By just May skip 6th. over WandaVision because you don't like it. You had to uh, watch it anyway. like probably one, the most, the th- only thing, the like, the thing I had to watch like above anything else. And then there's other things I'd probably are important to watch. But I think that was like one of the most important things to watch because Wanda is, is like a integral part of the new one. It is that just so that you get any references and stuff when the movie comes out? Yeah. You want to make sure you're not missing it's anything? It's like the whole, because re- she's kind of becoming a villain in, Doc- in Doctor Strange too, so it's okay. kind of the whole reason I, ha- I have to watch WandaVision, which sucked, because it sucked, but... I think that might be a bit of a hot take. A lot of people love that show, it seems, oh, but... a lot of people hate it, too. Do they? Mm-hmm. I haven't seen... Inter- I only know what Bark has told me and some other people, like, they tend Bark. to love it. It sucks. <laughs> I will... If he said he thinks he would have fun talking to you about that at some I point. I will live by that. It was awful. Yeah, he loves it, so I don't know. Who's to say? Mm. I guess I should watch it and be the deciding factor, but I don't, I don't really want who to. Doesn't, oh, yeah. If you someone who doesn't like Marvel. Marvel. Oh, you should definitely watch it then because that would just be funny then. <laughs> just to see what I think of it. Yeah, I don't know. I don't have anything else really to say. I figure we could start talking about wrestling. We got a, what I thought was kind of a lackluster week of wrestling, but uh, should we get into talking about it? Yes. All right. We will do that now with our first segment, which is taking a look at some of the week's wrestling news and rumors. So taking a look at the ratings from this week, uh, we've got NXT's Spring Break and Go Home Edition, I guess. It drew 577,000 viewers, which is up 1.41%, earned a 0.14 in the key demographic, which is up an impressive for them 16.66%. How up or down would you say your morale is? On NXT, I told you, I'm, I'm <laughs> thinking as a person who has not missed any NXT since it existed, uh, I think I might be tapping out after... 
spring break in or break whatever it's called is that spring was... break into electric boogaloo because again we'll get into more in the news um there's been obviously some changes in nxt that um some people i like are gone so we'll get into that but it's just and now they're invading foreign soils it's just a two-hour chore every week and i feel like i can replace it with an hour show like i could talk about uh, new japan strong instead or go back to impact instead even though that's two hours i can find something where I'm just not enjoying NXT, and I have to ask myself, how long am I going to keep enduring something I don't enjoy in a two-hour show, uh, unless I get a lot of feedback from people saying, no, please, you're the, we listen to your NXT review, and that's how we get through, then fine, but I don't think that's the case. I don't think it'll affect our listenership if I ditch NXT, so that's what I'm thinking about. Who knows? I'm, I've struggled because I have watched every episode, but I'm getting near the end of my rope with NXT 2.0. But anyways, um, I'm surprised you made it this long. Well, I quit like you tapped out early, but you don't have the ago, the history least. of watching it. Like there's something about that. I've seen every episode ever, right? That I just wanted to hang on to that and hope that it would turn around. But it's just not. It's not good television. Foolish. It's not entertaining. I don't watching people learn how to wrestle on television is not what I'm interested in seeing when there are other options, mm, right? There's but, that women's breakout tournament. Which, right, which I'm thinking we're getting even... And the men's one sucked, remember, last oh, yeah, year. That did. one had, like, solid guys in there. Other than Mello, cut, would he, is that when he came out of that, right? Yeah. So he's cool, but yeah, the overall tournament was well, very there's underwhelming. Trey Baxter. Like, there's some good guys in there, but just overall the tournament kind of sucked. Yes, and now it seems to be infecting NXT UK, but we'll get to that as well. So... Sorry, that was the third lowest audience of the year for NXT 2.0, tied for the second best demo rating, which I think is kind of interesting, right? Like, overall viewership not good, but demo rating quite good, so they'll be happy with that. And then we've got AEW Dynamite this week, did 921,000 viewers. And I remember I read you the headline that was something about second lowest ratings of the year, but it's only down less than a percent, so down 0.96%. Drew a 0.33 in the key demo, which is down a more significant 10.81%. So this is technically the second lowest viewership, although barely, and second lowest key demo rating of the year so far. But to be fair, both of these shows, again, are competing with some pretty interesting NBA playoffs as a person who's watching the vast majority of NBA playoffs right now. Um, they're still, like, at this point, three games each night, so that's going to draw some attention, obviously. Uh, anything from you, sir? Um, so they released. Um, yeah, this will be the NXT stars. We'll probably talk about a few of these. Some of them are not. So, some of them are significant, and some of them I've never even heard of. So, um, run us through the list, and maybe we'll talk about okay. the ones that are that matter to us after you've read. So the, the list. ones that won't matter, I'll get those out of the way because who cares? Uh, there's Paige. I might butcher it. Prince Vin, Prince Vizal. Sound, Prince, sounds like you Prince butchered Prince of it. Valley. There we go. <laughs> sure. Uh, Don't know who that Mila is. Mila or Myla, Milani, Don't know Sam, Jana, George, Raylan, Rollin, Divine. Uh, then the actual people that matter, more or less. Uh, we have Draco Anthony, Harland, Persia Prada, Dexter Loomis, Dakota Kai, and Malcolm Bivens. Yeah, so that last little group there, like, obviously I'm a huge fan of Dakota Kai, not any of her recent incarnations if you will in nxt yeah, 2.0 i think they didn't want to resign or something or yes that is that's sort of attached to the news i'll i'll get to that as well because i have some information on why and some of those Bivens is pretty surprising because he's pretty used yeah he's in the same boat as dakota kai so I'll, I'll, he didn't want to resign i'll jump to that now kai and Bivens apparently had no plans of resigning so they were let go um, and then harland it was basically the rumors are that he just simply hadn't progressed enough in the ring to their liking because he was brought in as like a big kind of a big deal they thought right he has quite a presence great size but i guess i he think just... the way they introduced him like his entire look was awful right and yes yeah, so the reports were kai was not going to resign so she was kind of mutual about the departure and Bivens same idea um which when i get to talking about nxt this week it sort of makes sense because i've had i've noticed that harlan for example hasn't been with gacy for weeks and Bivens did not speak despite being in a segment on TV this week. <laughs> as soon as they in a let, faction with Roddy. As soon as they let Roderick Strong do all the talking and not Bivens, I should have known he, something, he was, something known. was up, right? That's his write off. He doesn't talk anymore. So yeah, Dakota Kai at one point was one of my favorite women in all of wrestling, right? When the women's division was really thriving in NXT, I thought she was fantastic. I think I would suggest she is 
one of the most talented women to not have the title in NXT, possibly, considering how long she was there and that she did play a prominent role for quite a while. I think she's awesome. Um, and I didn't when she first got to NXT because I oh, thought... no, when she turned heel, it was like a... Awesome heel turn on um, yeah. What's-Her-Face. Tegan Knox. There that go. was really cool, yeah. Yeah. And then there was the street fight when that was when Raquel came in. And when she started, it seemed like they were trying to sort of... It felt like a, a budget version of Bailey, the the innocent, sort of overwhelmed, naive baby face. And then yeah, she was... She grew and got really good. The only time I really liked good. her as a baby is when she was like the scared kind of kid baby face uh, to opposite Baszler. Yes, she Remember was perfect that in was that cool. role. Like just terrified of the monster that is Shayna Baszler. That helped Baszler a lot. It so did. I'll credit her for that. And then I think her heel run was really good. They had a couple missed opportunities to give her the title, I think. When she challenged EO, that that was fair to have her lose because EO was in a great run. But I think right. Kai could have been Raquel, to be honest, or like because look what happened to the title now. Yeah, exactly. Um, I think Kai, there's a lot of missed opportunities to give it to Kai. I think she was great. Um, I think her and Candice LeRae kind of had similar things where like they just they turned heel and came a lot better. But I think Kai was one of the best ones they had and left. I, and I want to say I would love to see Kai in AEW, but they're not. Uh... They don't I have a strong history of using her, women correctly at this point. I for still me. want the, her to try just because I think she if, would bolster that division. If it right? works, then that would be great. Um, I think, I think it's interesting that they released Bivens and Kai before they're about to not resign because now there's probably a no compete. Exactly. At least for Kai, right? Depending on when their contracts were up. Yes. Right. So now, now, because like, like, um, for example, with Cole, right, his contract expired. Right. So, so he can go immediately. Right. And they didn't release him because they wanted to try to keep him. But, like, where they know that these ones aren't coming back, they just release him. Because then that at least keeps them off the radar for, like, what, a month and yeah, a half as, or so? as long as their contract was expiring within the next three months, right? So, like, if their contract was expiring in a month and you now release them, they have to wait 90 days, right? So it's ex it's sort of extending the time they exactly. can't be. Yeah. Um, and it's and it's largely because they're having Vince is having I forget what it's called like the, in, the investors meeting the investors whatever. meeting phone call thing and he loves to be able to say hey we made more money by firing people and like sort of you know taking away gainful employment from people so we c congratulations I yeah, guess right it's so um, great yeah so I think a few of those people are obviously happy to be gone and I would think they would I don't think Dakota Kai going to main roster that was apparently. The reason for her release as well was partly because they did not see her as main roster material. They'd had her in a couple dark matches and didn't think that she fit the main roster. And I think that's good news for her, right? Because I'd rather her see almost anywhere than on WWE main roster. Um, and I guess she agrees with that because she wanted out. Mm -hmm. So going with this theme of people leaving companies, the, Ooh, ins the inspiration segue. seemed to have taken it a step further and that they are basically stepping away from in-ring action altogether, although some would suggest they didn't really ever have any in-ring action because I'm not a big fan of them. <laughs> I'm not a big fan of them in the ring. I think roasted. I think character-wise and stuff, they're very interesting and very entertaining, but not so much in the ring for me. Oh, I, yeah, I love the Iconics. And, uh, yeah, they're, they're, they're very, very entertaining, great. right? Um, so to me, they, they are... They just a, had a, like very much a ceiling they hit that sports entertainment spot for me where they belong more in wwe where it's more about they can be funny and entertaining and not really do much in the ring it doesn't really matter yeah as i'm much surprised there. they a split them up b release them after like it right. was just like it was kind of their own fault for them not succeeding because i think if they stayed icon because like again the tag division is a joke but a then joke. i think that would make it better for them to hold the titles again because then like yep it, that would make sense they're literally like one of the few actual teams that held and, those titles. And they were entertaining and could talk and do stuff that was kind of fun. So they yeah. look like they're taking a break from wrestling altogether. I mean, we know how that normally works in wrestling. It probably means see, you, see least, you in six months somewhere. But Right, at least they're know. not saying retiring because then the that's true. just like... At least it's Stepping like... Stepping away. It is implied that they are going to come back. Like, it's not... Yeah, and it's just like a break. It, yeah, it's it not is definitive, like, right? They're kind of leaving the door it's open. It's not like when they come back, they're going to be breaking anything. You know what I mean? Right. So yeah, it looks like they are done off of Impact and wrestling in general for at least a little bit. What mm -hmm. else do you have? Uh, let's see. A uh, couple of interesting debuts for Dynamite next week. Uh huh. Um, Impact related. Uh, Diana Perrazzo set to make her debut. I know that one's interesting for you because she's her. 
uh, the Ring of Honor Women's Champion now, not the AAA anymore. Actually, no, she is not. Um, she'll be facing the interim ROH Women's Champion Mercedes Martinez, who has been in AEW a bit. That match uh, to could be great. The undisputed champion next week, so kind of something like they did with Cody and Guevara, just not a ladder match. Um, I find it stupid they give they gave Mar- Martinez a interim title because I don't think she's defended it, and it was just because Peraza missed the one show. That's right. Which they have not had any shows since. And so, that was, but that was that because they were promising lots of title I matches. Guess, is that but what like, it was? I, I think? feel like you could have substituted something else. I like agree. I, it seems I think strange. The is dumb, but I think that could be a good match. Me too. And also, W. Morrissey is reportedly to debut on Dynamite next week, being teased as Wardlow's opponent. Very next week. heavily teased. Um, so that's pretty cool. Um, I think it's pretty much gonna be. I'm happy for him. That that's pretty good for him. Yeah. Um, he's not like the best, but I like him, and that's good for him because he's been. A lot. And I love Perazzo. She's one of my favorite um, right. women's wrestlers. But again, she's I, filling a spot from yeah. taking a spot from somebody on the roster that never get enough time. So I mean, I that, hope that's an introduction for her. But uh, yeah, and I hope she kind of stays, or that they that they keep using her both in Impact and Dynamite if that's possible, because she is terrific and she could um, in the ring and out. I find her yeah, on the mic sure. really good. She could build some feuds that are relevant for this division that they need to sort of get going. Um, the only other thing I have is more about contracts being up and people leaving, and it's about Impact Wrestling again. One of them makes me, actually, I guess it's bittersweet. I was going to say happy because it's the Good Brothers, but if they leave Impact, there's a chance they're going to AEW, right? Which I don't want to see. But anyways, the Good Brothers contracts apparently expire in mid-July, and word is that Gallows and Anderson are not close to agreeing on a renewal with Impact officials. So they signed for big money, apparently, back in 2018. Really? Like, for Impact? Mm-hmm. Yes. They, they got released in 2020. So they released from where? In WWE. They got released in 2020. Are you sure? Yes, because I remember they were part of the COVID releases. Well, then the news I'm reading is out of date or wrong, because they're, they're, that's where it's... Because their last match, remember, they were involved in the Boneyard match. Right. So that is proof. So regardless of when, they definitely got big money from Impact. Right. And personally, I don't... I that can't, sounds accurate. I can't imagine Impact officials are like, wow, we got really good value from that contract, so let's sign them again, right? Other than, like, it brought in Omega for a bit, right? Right. But that was, like, that's long gone. And it didn't seem to move the needle a ton. And I personally can't stand them, especially Gallows. So, um, and I imagine, this is, again, just me speculating, that that they think that they still should command a high salary from somewhere. So um, I think they think they're bigger stars than they actually are. But again, I'm biased because I can't stand them. So I just hope they don't end up in I'm AEW. I'm hoping that is like a detriment to my, them. My perfect signed. fit for them is go back to main roster WWE because I don't watch it and I don't have to see you would be my goal. <laughs> yes. um, also, you've got Jonah. His contract is finished soon and indications are that he won't be re-signing with Impact either. And then finally, it looks like Willie Mack also will be finishing as a contracted employee. He's been there for a while, yeah. For Impact, yes. There is some speculation that he might still be around on a per-appearance basis because he doesn't seem, even though I like Willie Mack, he doesn't seem to be a guy that people are lining up to sign, right? So he might be kind of doing the indie thing and still available to work individual matches and things for Impact, but we'll see. So yeah, lots of employees contracts ending people getting released that seems to be the bulk of our news this week that's all i have do you have anything else um yes uh some some wrestlemania backlash card changes um so usos versus arky bro tag tell unification match has been scrapped at least for the time being um when i say scrapped it's not going to be on backlash they they'll probably do that down the line they, reason given they can't at resist all? themselves um because we're not getting the bloodline versus drew mcintyre and arky bro in a six-man tag for no reason Makes as sense. of now no titles are on the line so that's just because like for me like i don't really care about any of these matches but at least a tag title unification is something that is yeah. something and also now like you have no world title match you have neither tag titles on the line either so how like, many it would have been cool like what if then instead of having sam Zayn run from mcintyre um, for weeks on end you build mcintyre to face roman here in a singles match for right. the double title like you have mcintyre's not winning that's a cool match and then like yeah you have that tag title unification match i just like I don't know why you need a pointless six-man tag here. I mean, sure, backlash means nothing, but still a premium live. But event. I thought it was. Is it not supposed to be like lots of rematches from Mania? Is that still the case? Like I haven't seen yeah, the updated card. I'll get there, kinda. Okay. Um. So also added to the card was Happy Corbin versus Madcap Moss. That's something. 
and one of the that's something one, yeah, one of literally. said rematches is Lashley versus Omos. Right. Which uh, also I mean, Adrian Styles versus the Edge is a rematch. Um, who doesn't want to see Omos and Lashley again in a right. absolute classic? And the rope collapse again. Yes, could be. <laughs> poor um, poor Lashley. It's just me, right? What's that? Just me. Yeah, it's just you. Uh-huh. I'm out. Um, they com- AW confirmed Hangman Page defending the AW title against CM Punk at double or nothing. That's cool. Uh, he should not win. I fear a title change. Though. I do I don't, fear a title change. I don't want it, but I think they're smarter than that, though. So I, think... I fear that they think that's what the majority of fans want, and they actually try to give fans what they want, unlike some other companies. So I'm a bit nervous. I, I feel don't... like though that I wouldn't put it on him, but for because Tony Khan planned out the four for first four champions. That's right? true. I think. I think he probably has like a plan. I, I could see it. Like, I think he knows the money's in MJF, like I something think like that, right? I agree with that. I could see him, like, because obviously they know how popular Punk is, but I think they know, like, it's better to put it on someone like, like one of their guys. I feel like, yes. I feel like they, sh- like, he would know it's not smart to put it on Punk. Like, as popular as he is, I don't, I think he can still be just as popular without it. Yes. And I don't think there's much benefit you're right i don't think punk really needs the belt and for me at this point of his career his job is to come to aew and make other guys look better regardless of what level they're at to elevate them even further and he can do that right he doesn't need the belt you're right Right. there's no i see no purpose for the time and for me even though they're not even really circling each other yet, yes, the money is in page MJF for me. Right. And that's when we Once get MJF our... MJF puts over Wardlow. And that's where we get our despicable heel champion for quite a while right, again. Right, which we've been without for... Right, since, since Omega, Yeah, I guess. Miss yeah, Omega. that makes sense to me. Um, last one, the UK Stadium show on September 3rd in Cardiff has been given a name. Would you like to guess? Oh, I think you told me and I already forget. Okay, it's... Capital something. No, nah. I don't know why. I'm just guessing. It's uh in I don't know, I think Cardiff. I don't know if that helps. It does like, not. What uh, is it? Clash at the castle. Clash at the castle. They love that alliteration, man. You gotta yeah. hit it. Yeah, you got. <laughs> I, I mean, it's not like terror. It's just. So like, are we to believe they're wrestling in a castle? This will be held in a castle with a dragon. Awesome. Cause... I mean, in a moat. I want a moat. Uh, I has bring to have the moat. moat. Yeah, and a giant like door with the chains and. I think that would favor McIntyre, wouldn't it? Wasn't that be like his home turf? Since he's Scottish, and he's got, but he's got big swords and stuff. He just looks oh. like he should be in a castle to me. Right. I know he's Scottish. That's but that's where he wins the title. It's gonna have a. He's gonna have a signature, some kind of match. I don't know what the moat, the dragon slayer sword match. Sword on a pole. Sword on a pole, and then you have to get it and kill the dragon. <laughs> that's what I was. Yes. That's, and like you heard like, it here first, folks. In like a, a special steel cage, right? But the podiums are like um, castle towers, and then yes. there's just chain link in the the walter chain link but the podiums are like the poles are castle poles so the each, well, the ring poles should be castle each poles. ring post should be and instead of ropes it's a moat around the ring there you go nailed right. it right yeah Got and it. then um what else and then you have like i don't know do, like you know like the pirate cannons is that a castle thing yeah they probably you had have cannons. those like up in like parts of the stands and then there's Could, bleeds shooting or something. t-shirts t-shirt cannons t-shirt cannons yes like t-shirt cannons looking like that and then the main event is a sword on a pole dragon slayer match why are we giving vince all this free ideas right because then we get free tickets they're for sure gonna happen yeah then we we get an all expenses paid trip to clash at i would be like no thanks (laughs) i'm fine i'll take the cash value of that please (laughs) you don't want to have that option sword on a pole match i do not what if you hang the sword by its handle you have to grab it by the blade that yeah that separates the real contenders (laughs) that's like a barbed wire ladder like or or it's in a stone and only a certain person can pull it out right they all fight to have the opportunity to get the sword out of the stone but only the chosen like me like mjolnir person like uh, thor's hammer sure like because he i don't get that reference if he's worthy like he he can yeah exactly he's the only one who's worthy so he can like or captain america i guess but like it only the people who are worthy can exactly use it yeah that's what i'm saying okay so it'd be like um mjolnir sure or aka jonathan jonathan yes should jonathan the hammer probably wrap up the news and rumors yes. and whatever nonsense we just got <laughs> tangled up in booking a make-believe pay-per-view yeah. and move into our first in-depth review of some weekly wrestling and that's taking a look at aew dynamite and we open with our weird match which is 
Dax Harwood versus Cash Wheeler. Well, first we get we get punk music, and I was like, "Punk's oh, opening yeah. another?" Because yeah, that would have been right. like three in a row. Commentary. But he was just in for commentary. Where I don't know. I thought the commentary was interesting. He barely said anything for quite a bit, and then when he did, I felt like his mic level was low compared to. Was then like I the one time barely he was hear like, him. You like watching this or something? It was something like that. He's like, "Yeah." Yeah, they asked him a direct question. Yeah, because I have it here early on. Why is Punk here? He is saying next to nothing even when asked a direct question. And his mic level is too low when he speaks. So yeah, he was asked some direct question. He just went, yeah, <laughs> and offered no follow-up. But anyways. And he's been good on commentary before, so I think he, this is kind of interesting. I thought it was strange. Yeah. He, he was very subdued for a while. Very technical match here. Um, There was a lot of that early on, but I didn't really cover that. Uh, there's a superplex by Dax. Uh, multiple German suplexes by Cash. Uh, Dax countered, hit a German suplex of his own. Uh, Cash countered a slingshot powerbomb into Herc and Rana for two. Later on, uh, Dax is able to connect to the slingshot powerbomb for two. Pile driver by Cash for two. Um, Dax countered an avalanche back suplex into a crossbody for two. Wasn't perfect, but that almost worked to its benefit. Mm-hmm. Um, Dax hesitates on a sharpshooter because I guess he had been working Cash's knee or something. Cash takes advantage, counters into a small package for two, but... Uh, Dax actually rolls it back over to score the win and come out on top. Yeah, and somewhere in this rate, right, there was an accidental eye poke by Dax, and Cash wasn't very understanding. So I think that was like their quick way of establishing just for the match who's the face. Yeah, who's they the actually heel, came right? out of the opposite tunnels. Right. So I believe Cash was the heel tunnel. So Dax was very apologetic about accidentally poking his partner in the eye, and Cash seemed to not be too understanding just to set up that dynamic for this match. We did not get picture in picture for this, though we were promised, so we missed a little bit of it. But I mean, this was an intense physical match, as expected, right? It built really quickly. The crowd was very into it. And I kind of liked it, right? There's the simple story of two tag partners forced to face each other in a tournament. Um, and it's also like a tournament honoring a hero of theirs, so they're really going to try their best here. I thought the finish came quickly and far too soon for me. I was kind of wishing this got another. Uh, 10 minutes to be honest I would have been fine watching it I think it was an entertaining opener for sure and I ended up liking it there's not much chance I'm not gonna like a match between these two but I think there's another level these guys can hit obviously this wasn't even my favorite Dax singles match I don't think no I, I liked um him versus Punk Me ironically too. it was really good so yeah. uh, while this was a good match I enjoyed it I felt like there's like so if I were you know it's like a B level match, and I think these guys are capable of an A level match. So I liked it, but I think there's more there. Is basically what I'm saying. But a good match nonetheless. Yep. Um. Yeah, I think it was exactly what you expect from these two. Um. In terms of the style, there was a lot of pure wrestling and match stuff, but it was good. I don't think that was overdone. Um. There were a couple of spots that weren't done perfectly. Like um, uh, there was the one thing where they, where they fell through the ropes. Like he went for a crossbody and Cash had to catch him, but they went through the ropes. Like it looked. It looked kind of like I don't know, like. I don't know. It was maybe a mistake, like, but it looked but realistic. It, it came out looking realistic, right. so I even liked those. It, I like it. It just made it look like real. It was nice. Um, the finish came a little suddenly. I agree. Um, but I think it was uh good. Uh, the win went to the right guy. Um, I do think they are capable of a bit of a higher gear. Like I think they could have stepped it up given the chance. But I think this is this was uh pretty good. And it it, it made sense to have it as the opener. It's kind of what I expected was the opener, and I, and I yeah. definitely enjoyed it. Uh, next we get a CM Punk promo, which I guess they had to change because Hangman COVID. Right. So yes, they had to make some changes to this show, kind of WWE style, change the script, kind of day of or whatever, probably or just before. Except they had a good reason to, whereas yes. Vince just kind of feels like it. Yes, he's like, this is garbage. Oh, the thousand writers that I've hired and paid to do this, you don't know what you're doing. I'm gonna rewrite it myself. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Um, Punk praises the AEW locker room. He promises he will give a hundred percent and he will win. No. Uh, he says, without the fans, there's no him. He doesn't make the double or nothing, and he isn't a gambling man. Hat, <laughs> good one. Straight edge. Cause no, like double or nothing, gambling. Oh, got it. Ha. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but he will always bet on himself. Ha. <laughs> uh, he says Hangman will know he has been in a fight with CM Punk, because Hangman knows his name, uh, and he will continue to fight until the wheels fall off. Yeah, I thought good intensity from Punk. Um. He wove in a bit of his pandering punk. That's not my favorite, but I understand it. Um, so, question then: What do you? What's the dynamic for this match? Like, it's two baby faces, basically, right? Uh, I don't know. I could see Punk. I feel like Punk might assume the bit of the more heel role just for the match. Maybe? I feel like you pull a bit of a Punk dance, or sorry, a, a Hangman dancing. Because I remember, like, after right. he won the tournament, kind of should. Obviously, that kind of evolved into an, a 
an actual heel run of sorts. Yes, it did. Although now I'm not sure. Yeah, but, he's kind of tweener now, right? Yeah, I which, would say. I mean, it's good. It's fine. But, um, I feel like Punk could do that, or like, it could be like a respectful thing. They, they you could always pull that. I would trust them to do that. Handshake before, handshake after, kill each other in between. Yeah. For yeah, sure. or like, or like, it is respectful. Like right now, and then as like we get inch closer to the match, it kind of gets a little more heated. Maybe Punk goes like a little more heel into. It. I could see like out of the two, I would more expect punk to lean into i don't i don't Me see too. hangman doing that and, and punk's like the cerebral guy right so maybe he starts mind gaming a little bit just right. kind of leaning yeah heel i can see it like going to that right yeah it's interesting to mm-hmm. see where it goes yeah for sure um it was fine pretty sure i'm gonna be honest i was expecting hangman to come out and for it to be a whole thing makes sense now yes uh punk did say he would make it quick that seemed like one of those things that they always say at the beginning to foreshadow the exact opposite of that happening <laughs> yeah you sometimes, know what i mean yeah um but it was fine. Went a little bit into the baby face pander, but it was fine. He seems to go into that mode a little bit, right? It's my least favorite, but uh, it's we fine. We little bit. Yep. Uh, Scorpio Sky promo. Uh, Sky said it wasn't a coincidence. He was one of the first tag champs, won the Revolution Ladder match, and his undefeated streak in the TNT title, blah, blah, blah. He says he didn't ask Kaz to step aside to lose, obviously. Like <laughs> Spoiler. Well, like oh, just in general, like yeah, you all. Oh, I asked can you, you step, step aside, aside so I could lose, so I, so I can, can get lose. beat real quick, and then you yeah. can have your turn. <laughs> right? <laughs> you so don't think that's what he's going you for? You can lose. Yeah, and um, there can only be one face of TNT. That's actually not true. We've seen that there can be two. Several. Okay. Yes, there were we literally two guys with belts and one yeah. who did nothing to earn it. <laughs> right. Yeah. We, we could. We, <laughs> that is, Mr. Lambert. Well, I'm even saying like when Cody and Sammy both had belts. Oh, like, right. That too. <laughs> I was thinking Lambert quite, and Scorpio. Well, even that, like quite yeah. clearly, you can't have more than one. <laughs> and he says you are looking at it. Um, and I thought it was solid. I'd like him to win, but I can't see it happening. So yes. that's stupid me. That's funny because I would. <laughs> that is very funny because like I I remember um I'm saying that because it just like it doesn't seem like something they would do because what Sammy won it like a week and a half ago or we'll say because Battle Belts was on a weekend. Yep. And like they don't tend to do short reigns, especially when Guevara's no. win- winning it a third time. And I thought um, like <laughs> Guevara's just embracing this new heel right. character so that could be, be awesome with they the could belt. Run with. Yeah, and then I, I, well, we paused Diamond to like watch other stuff, and then I got spoiled, and I was like, oh. Yeah, so my notes I'll go based on the time. As yeah, well. that's what I like to um, do, right? Is that I thought Scorpio did a good job here, and this is where it gets interesting because like he's a really talented guy. It's just too bad there's not a lot of room on the roster for him to get much attention. Kind of thinking there's no way he wins the title on this show. Um, so then my thoughts were I was hoping that he and Paige go back to being a tag team and get a push as a as a heel tag uh, team, right, would be Yeah, I love Men of the Year. Their theme is sick, okay? Yep. It's awesome. So, yeah, I thought uh, I thought Scorpio did a good job here. I, at this point, I was assuming he had no chance to win. But anyways. Mm-hmm. Um, next, there was uh, Blackpool Comic Club, and I laughed when I saw that they were facing the factory. Mm-hmm. That's just funny. I wrote down Nightmare Family in my notes. <laughs> so I'm... <laughs> I'm <laughs> my finger is on the pulse <laughs> of, of what's going on here. Um, Blackpool Combat Club uh, attack right away in typical fashion. There's an Xbox to solo from Mox. Rope rebound into a German suplex by Yuda. Hot take flare from Danson. High half and half suplex to QT by Mox. Um, they were doing like the Blackpool Combat Club were doing uh, the, the simultaneous rapid strike thing. Yes, and then they were. Yuda rolled uh, Komarono into an interesting pin. Um, which Excalibur referred to as a seatbelt, because he will always know the name of he everything. Does. Almost always, Every yes. time. Yes, uh, and I think that's kind of their trademark thing right now, is that they're all executing a vicious move to somebody to end the match, right? Seems to be where they're going. So, I mean, this is what you expected, right? Um, the Combat Club just basically viciously dissected the factory for most of this, and I thought it was actually really fun to watch. Um, I thought Mox and Danielson looked great, and I thought... Um, I know you were a fan of him early on. I thought Solo selling was pretty good, actually, yeah, for me. Yeah, I don't like, mind him. He didn't get a chance to do much other than that, right? But I thought he did a good job. Um, and for me, like, if you have to get the factory on TV, this is the way to <laughs> if use... If you must. This is the way to use them, I think. I thought this was a fun little match that felt exactly the right length of time and had the result you would expect. So I, for what it... This show, for me, with the matches, was a lot of going, like... For what this match was supposed to be, I think it did a good job, right? Was there anything that was, like, amazing and I'm going to say you have to go out and see it? No, but I think, like, everything kind of served its purpose. This was to have the combat club look really strong and vicious. Um, 
and for Nightmare Family to get a bit of time on TV Zachary. and sell whatever. Uh, they did a good job, so I thought this worked for what it was trying to do. Yeah, and I was listening to, like, when we were in the car yesterday, I was listening to wrestling music for a bit. So my question is, Uh-oh. where's Kip Sabian? Um, released? Fired? No. no. He's still around? In the, in the crowds of Cardboard Box on his head. Yeah, he's um, sort of not doing that anymore, even. I, yeah, he's I, just disappeared I, he's again. He's doing that on Dark, or he was. Um, in terms of a squash, I, I think it was better than the last one. Yeah, it was they fun. were more dominant. Um, I think the last one was a little more enjoyable because you had like the offense from the baby faces. True. I, I think that was like um kind of fun, but I think this was still pretty uh good. Um, I think it should have been an absolute murder because it's a factory, but um, I think it was good for what it was. I don't know what offense they need to get in. I mean, like honestly, who cares? It's yes, the factory. Exactly. Um, could have been a little more decisive. I like. I think the pin you to use is cool, but I would have liked to use a finisher because like, for me he him. needs to, and he started doing it last week he needs to show that he's getting that viciousness passed on to other him, than right? like doing the elbow thing at the end like i think he needs more right because he got the whole he proved like he's resilient and he'll never give up and, and he was can... violent in the when he was bleeding right. like i think he showed violence in there and then i think he needs to translate that over now right because they need to show for me like what he's getting out of this affiliation a little bit more clearly but i still enjoyed it yeah um next we get speaking of really enjoyed it uh, <laughs> <laughs> next we got what i have titled yet another jamie hater tony storm segment for reasons i will never comprehend and is it's what i wrote at least i mean it started out feeling exactly the same at least it got a little bit different i guess but but well, i still didn't care describe it for us um brit says they just want to have a chat tony says she'd like brit to say hello to her little friend who's also qualified for the tournament it's ruby soho because she died wow and what a back. like like, is, how is that impressive? This is someone who never wins, right? Never is even around. I don't even remember the last honest. match she had. Right. Go on. I don't know. But she's your backup, so good right. for you, I guess. Soho says Baker and here always have a bunch to say when someone new comes in. Soho wants to fight right now. Baker says no and they leave. I have nothing to say other, on this other than, oh my God, who cares? Yeah, I'm Tony Storm and Ruby Riot to me. I thought they sounded really bad here. It sounds like they're clearly acting and that they're not good at it. So I didn't love it. Ro- uh, Ruby specifically, I thought sounded really phony here. Almost like it's back to she's reading scripted stuff from WWE days kind of thing. The only thing I liked about this was Brit's. I forget how she phrased it, but she had like a parting shot about Ruby Riot being in. Um, they were going to go to her home and catering. And catering whatever. where she is all the time or whatever. Like, Which I, like, I mean, that I, that seems, that's that's. Oh, sorry, ringing, Ruby, that's ringing Ru- true again. Ruby Soho. Sorry, I've written down Riot it here. It feels like it's a ringing true. Right. Um. So I thought that was kind of funny, but I don't... This segment added nothing to this angle, right? It's. It was like, oh, we want you guys to talk again, but it can't be the same as the last yeah, million times. Yeah, I really so we'll, don't care. We'll add Ruby Riot, who means nothing at this point in this division. So I did. I thought this was pretty much a waste of time. Mm-hmm. Uh, next we get a Jurassic promo or Jurassic Express promo. Whoops. Mm-hmm. Jungle Boy says last week stung a lot of extra because he knows he could have won. He doesn't want to sound like a sore loser or whatever, and he didn't finish him when he had a chance. Cage says he is sounding like a loser. Harsh. Oh, snap. But yep. he is in one, and they are still the champs, so Christian's being a little wussy boy. <laughs> uh, Cage is issuing a, the challenge to any top five team. Team Taz comes in, Starks accepts any time. Uh, I thought it was fine. Seemed to bring it back after by like the criticism of Jungle Boy. Not because he was good, but because I want him to go away. Um, I just want him gone. I also find Team Taz coming in to answer the challenge interesting because I'm pretty sure I'm certain a certain someone, me, went on a whole thing last week after that <laughs> tag match saying they're kind of good and either of those two teams could make a play for the titles. Where, well, a week later, here we are, gents. But should Woo! So I agree with you, Starks and Hobbs have shown potential, but I don't should think... they get a shot already in this division? I don't know, but I, that don't, was my question. I don't mind being right. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, I hate it. I hate. I prefer to be wrong. I think if they build it up right, it could be a solid match. I'm not expecting oh, I think so this too. to be uh, the double or nothing feud, though. I feel like this is this a placeholder. Is, yeah, this is a placeholder. Yeah. Then we get like another team coming in for double or nothing. Who I don't know because men of the year are busy. Oh, you could have done that, guys. But right. now you can't. 
So I thought Jungle Boy is sounding more confident on the mic, right? Yeah, like he was better. A lot better. And my other question for you, outside of do these guys deserve a tag shot Should now? Christian go away? Yes. Do you think, I? because I do, I think this is like the slow burn of Christian turning on the other two. Yeah, for sure. Right? Like, no, this, this is, is the, like the first real sign of that happening. Right. So you've been saying that a bit, right? I know. I think it's you've been coming. Saying that, but I think this was like the first sign of like, we actually saw that. Yeah, and I... I I know you're not a fan of Christian at all, and I'm not. He's not something I would I, I would choose to, to push away. on this card. But I think we can agree they have to do something with him, right? Like you've said, you've called him Uncle Christian. He's just kind of there with these guys all the time, not yeah. doing anything. So, yeah, I think they have to do something. He's just kind of been treading water for months, right? Budget so, cuts, <laughs> right? Well, they tend to let contracts expire. Yeah, no, right? they should so, budget cut him and sting. But yes, I assume Christian eventually is turning, and heel Christian will be more interesting. Um, despite me, I would rather his spot go to someone yeah, young and exciting, sure. but whatever. Here's my compliment to Christian. I would rather them release Sting first. Of course. You're going, because you're an ageist, so you're literally like, who's the oldest? Gone. Well, who's the next oldest? Gone. <laughs> I mean, yes and no, because he's technically Dust, like... Dustin Rhodes, pack your bags. No, okay, Dustin <laughs> Rhodes is fine. Um, Billy Gunn, pack your bags. <laughs> yeah, get rid of Billy Gunn. <laughs> but Sting is like literally the most useless. Like, there's... I haven't the hated how they've useless. used him, to be honest. I despise him. I know you do. Um, next we get Lance Archer versus Wardlow. Labors of Wardlow, Chapter 2. Uh, oh. <laughs> it is. <laughs> and they seem to be going up in size and ability, right? As we'll sort of learn. Are, well, you, saying, are you saying Morrissey has more ability no, than Lance Archer? Okay, well, not. nope, you said it. You no, can't take it back. Probably not. Morrissey has more ability than Lance Archer. Because Morrissey could do a shooting star off the ropes, and mm. Archer can only do a moonsault, okay? Right. So Morrissey's better. Um, juiced Archer. up Morrissey who knows what he could do when you when you pump that many steroids allegedly into your body who knows what you can that do that back knee probably gave him the power to do or, like a or, yes double moon salt. exactly um Archer hits a cannonball off the apron to Wardlow and uh security after he got his cuffs off I am not sure if this is part of it but I noticed that Wardlow's ring gear has been was really plain here and it might have been last week too I I'm did like, not notice I don't either it's like it's just like that's his gear right now or yeah. like MJF's like, I could easily see MJF like giving him a ringer like, we we don't want to draw attention to you, we don't want them to cheer you, you're a pig or whatever. So he just gives him like oh, kind yeah. of plainish ring attire. Like I could be reading too much into that, right? Like I, it could just be like that's his attire right now. Yeah. And I noticed this thing with like it the it's a little lower. And it seems like a contract it could be like that where they determine everything Wardlow does, so it wouldn't be out of the realm of right, possibility, exactly, right? Yeah. So I thought that might be yeah something. Um, there's a running Hurricane Rana by Wardlow. Um, I was that caught me by surprise, and the reaction of Spears and MJF was great to that too. Yeah, like, that, that was really cool. Yeah, yeah. I got it pretty good. Um, the, he was like he was moving pretty fast here. Um, there's a strike he exchange, was. rope walk moves up by Archer. Psh, Morrissey could do that way better. <laughs> uh, choke slam by Archer for two. Something else Morrissey could do. Yeah, well, um, Archer... every big man 101 choke slam, <laughs> right? It's the first yeah. thing they Unless learn. Unless you're in like. Big... If you're like the Wardlow kind of guy, you're gonna do like slams and the power bombs, or whatever. Like, cause he's like more muscle, right? But yes. if you're like a tall guy, like, uh, hint, like Archer, Omos, Satin, Sing, all day, choke slam, choke slam, choke slam. Right. Um, there's actually Archer actually hit a blackout. I didn't expect him Me to either. hit it. That's so that's cool. He got a lot actually. Yeah. Um. He did. He did like that pin where like it's partially set up so Wardlow can counter into a crucifix, which yep. he did for two. There's a diving swan tom by Wardlow for two. Another surprising move. Like, okay, cool. Yep. Um, and then he finishes him with four power bombs. Yeah. Um, because that's what happened. So again, the sort of theme of this show is I think every match kind of did its job. And I like that Wardlow showcased speed here, like looked really quick and showcased some new moves that even caught me by surprise, right? So I think it's the idea of, so you look at me as a power guy, MJF, you can keep recruiting more and more power guys to face me. And even if I'm not the powerhouse of the match, I find other ways to win as well, right? Yeah, so, I like this because um, he busted more speed and athleticism than we're used to. And, and like, I don't know, it, it's baby steps, I assume, but like it could show more potential for him, right? Yes. Like this could be like a sign like, like he's more than a powerhouse and like that he could. Right. I think that's or the like point. Or like he's just like. He can. He's a little more well-rounded than exactly people might think, and that's good because, like, as they build him, I, I like him showcasing more because maybe, maybe, I what I think like that. That's kind of what this should. This whole thing should be for like that's the purpose of these repeated matches, right? So I think like 
like maybe we get some sort of evolution next week because if anything morrissey is more of a big exactly. man, right like he's we're going bigger and stronger right and like less he's more limited than archer i mean yes. like archer's doing like the moonsault off the ropes morrissey's doing a big Not. boot <laughs> exactly right so i think like maybe that then ward those cue to do something like a slight step of what he did Agreed. here you know what i mean like maybe like this is like just Wardlow's evolution. Also, I'm sub- I'm sad they didn't do the labors of Wardlow and give him like matches and like he had to face Nick Gage and yeah, Juventud Guerrera. So I think the point is, if you put a small jobber in, I'm just gonna squash him with power moves. But as you keep adding bigger, more accomplished people, I have I'm more diverse than you think I am, kind of thing. Like you, I have stuff I've never you've never seen and before. Eventually, he's gonna start wrestling um, with Brian Danielson. And I thought Archer actually got a chance to look good here too. Like you said, hit his finishing blackout, got a near fall out of it. Um, so I it's refreshing, right? Because the Wardlow, a million yeah, that's power what we were saying matches, before, right? We're getting like, old, so they yeah. they have they are breathing new life into it. They brought me to like the cusp of being really tired of it, and then they've sort of changed it. So I thought that's this almost was, smart. I thought this was a pretty fun Haas match that uh, yeah. accomplished what it needed to, which, again, is kind of the theme of the show It's Archer, me. a bit of TV time. Right. I mean, this is his life now. but Heat him up, have him lose, and yeah. put him but back I, on the back I think, burner. I think they did well. Somebody's so got to do that. that role, right? Yep. Um, next, we get Jazz sit down in the ring with Kingston and Proud Powerful. It's a trust circle. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Um, Jeff Parker said Tony Khan gave time to them because he knows sports entertainers are best for business. I like that. If yep. that's There's an authority a reference. reference. Yep. I hope it is because that'd be pretty funny. Um, they had to give their word for no physicality tonight. Um, Kingston Power Powerful make their way down um, to Kingston's cool ass theme. Uh, Jericho says we are all lucky enough to be living in the Jericho era. He says they deprived the people of Pittsburgh what they wanted to see last week, which was Jericho when they were banned from the building and demands an apology. Ortiz like they do the thing where like he's feeling looking for something in his pockets and he flips off Jericho. Mm-hmm. Santana does that as well. Santana says Jericho's problem is he turned on the two dudes who know him best. Garcia speaks and tries to provoke them into hitting them. Uh, Kingston says he hates this and he doesn't care about sports entertainment crap. He tells Jericho to stop with the crap and he wants to fight. He doesn't care about the numbers game. Jericho says it is five on three. They're too stupid to realize it, even though Kingston just realized it. And they'll take them out one by one. It is. Um, Kingston tells them to shut up and ask Jericho if he knows what a hit means. Um, because he said he would put a hit on them or whatever. Murder. And if Jericho says that in his world, it ends things. Jericho asks what Eddie will do because he can't do anything and tells him to stand there and do what he's told. Eddie says he won't hit him and he can smell the fear on Jericho. And when he says put a hit on them in their world, he better be prepared. He better be prepared to put someone in the ground. He asks if Jericho is prepared to do that and he says nah. Yeah. Um. <laughs> I really liked Getty Kingston. I yeah. liked it a lot. Oh, um, Eddie's amazing. He was just awesome. I don't know how to explain it, but he just, he comes off so natural and all the time. Like, he's just very, like, I don't know, it's like street or whatever. Everything's just, real, like, man. Everything is real. Yes. Yeah, I like when he, when Jericho used that term just as like a metaphor or something, he's like, he makes it real and he's like, how different they are. It actually means something to him. I like how he becomes kind of crazy. And he's just like, he just wants to fight. He's just like, yes. a like, he wants to fight. I think. I think he was awesome. I really liked him here. I thought I, I thought he made this segment. Um, my only thing is whenever Garcia speaks in this gimmick, I hate it. Just like <laughs> the sound and the way he delivers stuff and like his mannerisms, it just, it might be part of the stick, but he's just not fit for this. Right. And maybe that's the point. But I'm all I'm saying, he just does not fit. Um, generally great segment. Um, I think Kingston carried it. Um, I really liked him here. Yeah, I I like this less than you. Kingston always does a good job. Um, they threw out the term AEW Galaxy, right? Which was kind of that funny was, too. oh right, I forgot. That's about another that was sports funny. sports entertainment yeah. thing. And I think the whole like table and chair setup sit down is sports entertainment too. So there yes. was a bit more of that. Yeah, I don't think like it overly invests me in the feud, but I really like Kingston here. Yeah, regardless, the the combination doesn't seem to fit too well for me still. Um. I think the presentation of JAS makes Kingston and Santana own Ortiz like they, I don't know, it just makes them a little bit less cool. And Kingston's doing his best to try and pull them out of this, and he did a great job. And I think their idea was like the sports entertainment guys versus the really serious fighting guys, and maybe that's working for some people. But I just feel like Eddie and Santana and Ortiz would want nothing to do with these guys. And again, they're not putting over the whole. Santana and Ortiz bitter feud with Jericho as much as I think they could be. I'm just, I don't know, I'm not feeling the heat between these two groups. And considering you have Eddie Kingston, who is one of my favorites on the mic in all of this industry, it's a bit of a surprise. And yes, he did his best here to try and salvage this. 
but I'm still feeling like this it feud is a waste of his talents for the most it part. Is, and I'm but... not really interested in any sort of payoff from this. I'm not really interested in, right? Like, not even stadium stampede. Regardless of who wins, I don't really care that much at this point, which yeah. is too bad. Mm-hmm. Uh, next, we get a Sam McVara promo. Um, Sam says tonight he gets to kick Sky's ass for a third time in his match because he was in one ladder match recently. Um, I don't, has he been in another ladder match? I maybe, but I don't, I'm sure he has. I don't remember. I, can, I will never remember until you um, remind me. He says Sky's been the most works. unmemorable guy here. He says both of his reigns were forgettable. Um, I thought his fast was good. I thought it was funny when he was like, meant the way he was talking about Sky's lines. He was like, tag time reign, forgot about it or something like yes. that. And it was funny. Cause, I like that too. Also, it's kind of true because like they were the first champions. Like, and I remember that they were champions. Yes. The only thing I remember about their reign was them dropping it to Hangman Omega on the Jericho cruise. Remember right. when they did the show on yep. the cruise? Yep. Yeah. That's the only thing I remember about their title run. I, um, I think this is great for Sammy, which is why I was so surprised with the result of the ladder match. I think I think Sammy Guevara is a super confident guy in real life and probably cocky, I would suggest, and I don't even think he would disagree with me. So I think this is him like tapping into that and dialing it up to 11, which is like where the best heels come from. Right, I, like, ta- like you do you, but then you just dial it up to make it more... Heel. Right, and I've been kind of bored by Sammy, the sign holder on commercials, right, and been saying he needs yeah, to do something. Yeah, but if Sammy had potential, but I think it kind of tapered out. I think he and Conti could be a, like, super strong heel combination, like, just so arrogant and full of themselves and doing the whole, like, social media thing. I thought Sammy was really good here, and I'm excited by this combination. Again, very surprised by the... um main event result but i think they might have a plan for these two because i think they see like you're getting more heat than lambert in repeatedly yeah. in segments she with kicked him. him in the balls in the main event and got booed right how do you get booed so, for kicking lambert in the balls i think tony khan is smart enough to see the massive no, heat these two are getting so i'm i'm assuming there's plans for them and i look forward to it because i think the two of them and i i mean tay Conti might need some work with heel stuff, but I think they this I think com- of our helps though. I think this combo have massive potential. Yeah, for sure. And I think like we were saying, I mean, like Con's smart enough to not put like to see that there's more money to put the title on MJF instead of Punk. I think he would also be smart enough to see yes. the potential in this right now, right? Because it's 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 a hot heel thing, right? Whereas like, Vince would sit boot. there and go, "Nope, damn it, this is he's a baby face, right? He's like a baby if face. that's what if Vince wanted him to be right. a face, he would be. He a would face. just ignore the crowd and everybody right. else and jam face Sammy down our throats, but, right? AEW doesn't seem to do that, so I think they're going to lean into no, I this think Tony as, Khan will see as they should. Smart. Yep. I, I could see them going with another title match on Double or Nothing, but I don't really want them to do that. No, I don't I know where Gavar they're going to go. I think could move on. Some, I think this, that's probably the plan, this right? This whole feud's odd, because I think you need to have, like, you could give Sky a title program at the pay-per-view. I'd like that. But I think you need to um, have Sky go revert back to heel, and then... I think... What's going to happen is we're getting the mixed tag team match, and then hopefully Sammy and Conti are done with America Top Team, right? And they're off to somewhere else, and Sky can keep the title and do something else. I don't I know. I miss Man of the Year's but theme song. We'll see where it goes, I guess. It was really good. I don't remember the last time they used it either. Me either. Uh, next, we get Serena D versus Hikaru Shida in a Philly street fight. In the rubber match of the fifth match, right, of this series that has dragged I on don't forever. I don't remember when the last match was. Some matches were great, some were disappointing, if I remember correctly. I think the first two were really good, and then the later two were... Right, less, less. so. I don't even remember when the fourth match was. I don't either. I don't, I don't know. Don't ask me to remember things. That's not... That's your job. Right, my bad. <laughs> uh, she does on offense earlier with a knee in the corner. After D rolled out, she went for the... Uh, knee off the apron do you blocked her with the chair back in the ring she um hit a shin breaker on i thought the chair. that was cool looked mm-hmm. pretty good um later on d rolls out of the ring she goes to grab her d throws white powder to his face and attacks her with the kendo stick my favorite was jr i think it was speculating <laughs> that it was thumbtacks. a bag of thumbtacks i did at first but when then, you could like, clearly you... see it was a ziploc full of yeah, white powder i did at first and then i was like oh that's not really thumbtacks because no, but... no their move is always in like a black sack of well thumbtacks. and jr said that after clearly that the bag yeah, is visible too late. with white powder right yes. um yeah that was funny and then d blocks the katana knee from Gita with the chair again there's an avalanche falcon arrow by Sheeta for two. D talks on a chair for a near fall by Deeb, and she wins by submitting Sheeta with the clover leaf. Detail: Is it the D talks or is it the Deeb talks? 
I I wrote down know. deep tox because I think I that think would, it's detox, but I, I don't think, know. I'm not sure either. I think you could be right, but I have no idea. I'm not sure either. Just feels like something they might right. add in there. Um, no, for sure, and it, it's like a easy pun, like it's not like stupid. Right. It's hard to pick up. KLR though. bomb. Right. Exactly. Sorry, did you Alba Fire Bomb? Did you get the finish of this? I forget. Oh I, yeah, I sorry. Um, yeah, I said it. Um, you she did. to Mitch she did it with the clover leaf. Right. Um, I, they mentioned was the Dean Malenko move, and I thought that was interesting because she used she did she has the woman version of Malenko's nickname. So I thought exactly. that was kind of funny. I think that kind yeah. of is where That's, they're going with cool. it. Uh, so I like this match, and I'm really happy to see two talented women getting some time. Not enough time, in my opinion, but getting some time on an episode of Dynamite, because that is my weekly complaint of they get one match, and a lot of times it's enhancement or close to it or lower card women. So this was a combination of wrestling and weapons use, so I, I thought it was good overall. I don't think it was amazing. The finish, again, came kind of quickly. This got about 11 minutes, and I pointed out to you, I think it was CM Punk and Dustin Rhodes got 17 minutes a couple weeks ago. I think it was last week. In just a not built f- match at all, whereas this is like the culmination of a month long feud and Months. it gets 11 minutes, Months. right? Um, for a fifth match in a bitter feud, I feel like it could have gotten a bit more, but we get a decisive win for the heel. That makes sense because I would assume, since we currently have a baby face champion that needs a challenger, right? Rosa Deeb is a matchup that interests me. Yeah, she for was sure. actually um, adjacent to the monitor after the match. Right. <laughs> um, so I imagine. I, I would like to think she was standing there for 11 minutes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so that is a match that interests me. It looks like where they're going, um, especially if they can actually put some build, some type of build behind it. Like, I don't know. Yeah, Deeb could make that for it's sure. It's been sort of lacking in builds lately, so I'm hoping they. Because I want to see the match, I would just. I love them to add some stakes and story to it as well. So yeah, I lo- I thought this was a good match and it ends this feud, but again, um I thought it needed a bit more time to it, but still good. You? Yawn. Um I think it was solid. I wish there was more though. Like for a street fight kind of match, I was hoping for some more spots, like some more kind of cool weapon spots we typically get. And the there crowd was, some... was relentlessly chanting for tables, right? And never right. got it. <laughs> there was some smart work using the chair, don't get me there wrong. Was. But I feel like we didn't get much more than that. Like, it was a lot of chair, chair, chair. Yes. Bit of kendo stick, white powder. Woohoo. Um, I think that was it. It was solid. It felt kind of short. I expect more from these types of matches. Like, you get in the win, though. Could set up for a double nothing title program. So, I think that's pretty cool. Yep. Um, Sheeta wearing jean shorts was a nice touch. I didn't notice that until towards the end. Because it's a street fight, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I hope this feud is done because I think it's definitely run its course. I hate to say it because I, I really love this at the beginning. Me too. Um, But I think it is far run its course it has definitely um they could revisit it way way down the road but yep not anytime soon no. I, think, I think it's for sure run its course it's i don't time know time for both of them going. to move on yeah next again mjf and sean spears uh interview he says he has a plan and he screws up the interviewer's name when she tries to correct him lexi uh she he yells at her to leave <laughs> that's kind of funny me too he says he is calm after not being calm <laughs> right um because he has a damn good plan he talks to some big man on the phone this will make six figures on a match because MJF has money to burn. Mm-hmm. Um, he says, Wardlow's going up to someone who's smarter than him and bigger than him and taller than him, and you can't teach that. Mm-hmm. So I, I was fine with this, right? It's a quick way to tease Morrissey coming to face Wardlow. Uh, and MJF, like you said right at the beginning, got in some really simple, effective heel work, not knowing the interviewer's name and then immediately dismissing her kind of rudely. So that was just a quick, good heel move from him. And again, I guess the point is MJF keeps getting, quote, bigger and better opponents for Wardlow to dispatch of. Oh, I'd say better. I don't know how you get much better than Big Cass, though. On his way to, I mean, obviously, he's finally going to get his hands on MJF, and that's going to be quite the payoff. So I think this was a quick little way to, you know, tease the arrival of somebody and continue this little build for their match. Yawn. <laughs> a lot of yawning going on over there. Yeah, Maybe I, don't stay up so late tonight. Um, I thought it was a solid problem. Jeff thought the flip out of the interviewer, who I don't recognize, was funny. The ending line from MJF basically confirms what I've been seeing. Um, I think that W. Morrissey, um, formerly known as WWE's Big Cass, yeah. or Colin Cassidy, if you really want to go back, right. um, will be Warlord's next opponent. I don't know how great the match will be. Could be fine, but I'm happy to see him there just because like, after he kind of turned his stuff around with yeah for sure stuff. i'm i'm happy that he's getting like that kind of smile like, even for a one-off like i don't yep i don't really need them to sign him but I, i'm happy for him i think that's pretty cool well and he's kayfabe getting six figures for this yeah you know, that's exactly, great great yeah. money for him too 
Big break. Yep. Uh, next we hear from the House of Black. Lights go out and a spotlight shows Fuego and his whole, like, lying dead on the interstage. I thought it was kind of funny. So, like, are we to believe, like, what did the fans see here? Mm-hmm. How did this man end up just lying on the top of the ramp? They like, did, did they have to watch him, like, walk out and lie down <laughs> on a commercial break or something? You know what I mean? Or, like, Anyways. They, they just tossed him. Out. I don't know. Could be. <laughs> just runs out. He just, like, the... Trips and like, falls in the middle of the spotlight. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I don't know. um, you know, like I seen like a video where like the lights go for the fiend and you see him like coming out in the ring and just run into the ring. Yeah. Um, and comes from under like it just fucking like, a soul comes bursting out of a tunnel and then just, just like collapses, and lies down. Yeah. Um, so they they surround him and they're about to re- remove his mask and Abraham is in the ring is in the ring in his robes. His stupid but stupid robes. It sounds like a voiceover, like or it sounds like coming from like the. Speak, speak this, yeah, this did not go where I thought it was. I thought it was going to be Penta under the robe. Oh. <laughs> Wouldn't that make sense? No. I like you know. have Abrahante's voice, so they think it's going to be easy to kill Abrahante's and then surprise it's Penta, not so easy to kill him. I guess, but they kind of no. did that, but right. better. Because, yeah. Um, and he talks about how Luchador masks are sacred. He's been dressing like this so they could blindside them as they are reaching the ring as he's talking. Penta and Pat come out. Abrahantes comes out in normal people clothes I, and says they haven't yes. forgotten. Phoenix takes off the robes. He's wearing all white gear. I think it's really nice. Um, and he's in the ring. Uh, Pack and Pen attack King and Black as they ditch the ring. And Phoenix lays into Murphy. He hits one of those like the springboard uh, heel kicks that I really like yep. in the corner. They're stereotyped by Death Triangle. Um, that was pretty much it. Um, I thought it was fine. I'm disappointed there was no promo from House of Black. I really like their promos. Yeah. Well, it's definitely not the whole reason our Hontas was dressing like that for the whole time. I like that they kind of used it for the misdirection here. I thought that was kind of interesting. I almost um, feel like this is them acknowledging people think that look right. is stupid and getting rid of it. Yeah, yeah. Right? I like, can see that. Because it is stupid. I am for sure happy Phoenix is back and, and back and well after how he went out. Um, yep. I find it funny that he's wearing all white except for one black elbow pad. So I'm pretty sure that's the arm that discombobulated. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I really like the all white gear because that's just that's always a master stroke. I think white gear is always you do a love great the white gear. It's awesome. Seth Rollins has proven my point. Also, uh, remember the takeover in your house five way. Pete Dunne wore all white. That True. was sick as hell too. Mm-hmm. Um, and I also like because it's a nice contrast to Penta, right? Because he's it in is. all blacks. So I think that's kind of interesting. Good point. Um, I like the bit we got a Murphy and Phoenix. I really hope that's a tease at a singles match with them because that would be epic. Like I like a couple weeks on Dynamite, book that. That'd be awesome. I would also like this trios match um, for double or nothing. I think that because like I find sometimes they have good matches for non-title matches on pipe reviews, but they also sometimes struggle with those. Yes. Right? So I think this would be like, and you learn from the last one because I feel like the last one with Eric Rowan that was great and that was on it the kickoff. Was. Now you you I love that match. You replace him with Phoenix. You elevate that to the main card. It should be for sure. Maybe even throw in a stipulation. Although to be Although fair, Rowan, Rowan looked great in that match. True. Right? Yeah, we really sure. liked him in that. Um, I you could even slap a stipulation on it if you really wanted to, and then yep. like that's a fun match right there. So I think, I think this should be a double nothing feud. I'm hoping they don't throw it away on a dynamite. Yeah, because I think that is totally worth putting on a paper. How feud. long till double or nothing? When is that? Uh, I have no idea. I want to assume it's like mid or end of May. Okay, if I had to guess. So they could make it to yeah, that for sure. Um, so I also would love a trios match between these, but I didn't really care for this segment. I just some of it doesn't make sense to me. I still don't know why House of Black got so involved with Fuego del Sol. Like, did that happen on the internet? Probably. Rampage. Oh, Rampage that yeah. we didn't see. Yeah, I remember they, they faced him in Bear County and then him and uh, Grayson and Nuno. So I don't get that affiliation. I don't quite get Penta and Pac getting involved again because that's been kind of on and off again for so long. Regardless, happy to have Phoenix back. Love a match between the six of them. I can't say the build has worked for me at all. I don't really get this whole obsession with Fuego del Sol for weeks and weeks. Like, you've got this group of supposedly, you know, important people worrying about the one of the biggest jobbers you have on your card for a month now or so. So, um, but it does feel like they took feedback from fans, maybe, that the Abrahantress in robes thing is stupid. I'm hoping that that's just gone now entirely. Um, but anyways, I don't get what's going on but i'll be happy with the match i think bottom line didn't love the segment sure. totally on board for the match mm-hmm. uh next shivani interviews darby and swerve because they're gonna face off in a heart qualifier yep. yesterday um swerve says he's looking forward to turning rampage into swerve's house again 
Darby says AEW is his house, and Rampage, you'll show him why the tournament and it is his tournament. Yeah, I I liked because they started it with Swerve talking about yeah. basically implying that they have faced each other a lot in the indies all over the place, right? And that Darby saying that doesn't really make them friends or whatever, or I'm sorry, Swerve saying that? Who was somebody was trying to say they were friends, and the other one saying not really. I think kind Shivani of. said that, or something. Um, Maybe I don't know. At least they have history, which I didn't even know that. But Swerve, Swerve sounds cool, and I thought Darby's response made sense, and that he delivered it pretty well too. And again, he didn't have Sting with him, so we always like that. Mm-hmm. Retro Darby is what we want. Yes. Yep. Um. Uh, Swerve was good. I like the way he talks. Darby was solid too. I'm um, speaking of retro Darby. Darby has been getting less creative with their adventures with his face paint. Oh boy. Um. Uh, like they're all resembling uh the basic face paint from early on in his run, like the first AEW figure he has. Like it's like the white with like a basic skeleton design. Right. Uh, maybe he's just waiting for another big match. I mean, come on, man, Probably. do something cool like he this will. stuff and like this. Um, like a uh, cool new skull look or like another like thing with the trees, like the figure I got here or like something cool. Even like do the full face paint for once, because like I think it's only done a couple times where he just like has full face paint. Mm-hmm. Um, and like. Or, like, body paint? Come on. Body paint is sick. I'm sure on a pay-per-view and, he will. And then need some cool figs out of that. Yeah, I, I don't know how he'll get on a pay-per-view, though. But they should do that. Sure. Yeah. Uh, next, we get Unspeed Elite. Um, I guess the Young Bucks are in that faction, if I have to include them. Uh, versus Dante Martin, Lee Johnson, Brock Anderson, the Varsity Blondes, a.k.a. the All-Star Squad. Versus a bunch of random dudes who don't have much to do, basically, it seems like. A little bit disappointing for Dante Martin, right? Because he seems like he had elevated a little bit past this for a while, but now... Even with Darius, I think he'd be above that, because I right. think they could do tag stuff, but here he is. Here he is indeed. Um, I didn't know much from this, because it's just like, it was a short kind of frenzy. Uh, there's a bit where Fish hit an exploder suplex to Brock Anderson that took a springboard dropkick from Martin. Um, there's a flurry where the Unspeed Elite are in control. They are taking out everyone, like, with a bunch of offense. Um, the finish came with a four-way BTE trigger to Lee Johnson, then a last shot. Yeah, uh, I thought this was a fun match. Definitely, um, they let the young guys showcase themselves a little bit. It was definitely one of those matches where you have to be okay with the ref having no control, because like you said, there was a lot of stuff happening simultaneously in this. A uh, really quick match, and as a way to show how effective I think the point was, right, that, again, this match did its job, which was, if the Undisputed Elite can put aside their sort of infighting, they're a super effective group, right? And I think that was the point here. So I think this match did its job. It was, I thought it was fun while it lasted. Yeah, um, I think for it was fine um, for what it was. <laughs> yeah. Um, a pretty short enhancement match. Not much to talk about, but the floor where you did a crap of stuff was cool. They killed Lee Johnson at the end, so that's cool. They did. Um, they all have matching shirts now, so that's how you know they are the best of friends. Right. And I want the shirt because Adam Cole sold it for me. Yep. He wore it, so I will wear it too. You will. Um, cut to backstage where Jazz had attacking some prime powerful in like the parking lot. Um, they're already kind of laid out, but then we see them light a fireball in the Kingston's face. So that's pretty fun. Is the fireball sports entertainment? That's my question. Was that the point of that? Uh, I don't see any other reason. I mean, like Alexa Bliss did that. So yes, it's sports See, again, to me, you want to lean into the sports entertainment. It's a random car with an unidentified driver running them over, right? That's the classic sports entertainment <laughs> to me. But uh, anyways, the Steve it's Austin. Fine. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I'm still not feeling this feud, but I guess this was quick at least. And it seems like they are, AEW is obsessed with people's eyes and going after their vision right there's a lot of it oh my god remember um way back when in the mox jericho feud mm-hmm. remember they did that to mox yep. and santana and we get like um julia hart is right, still having Cash. eye issues Sheeta just got blinded tonight in a match yeah and then there's like the house of black stuff right and... so there's lots of vision problems going on well, vision. Wanda Protective Vinny. goggles, I think, is what the union should negotiate for in uh, AEW. I mean, I think you do. You need that for sure. COVID face shields, just in COVID case. Face shields. Hey. Right? Yep, that's that's but, exactly what you need. Um, or an eye for an eye match. Oh, of course, his eye has been extracted. <laughs> <laughs> that was the best. It was. Um, next we get a Samoa Joe Trent Beretta video package because they're. Joe's going to defend the Ring of Honor TV title against Trent Beretta on Rampage yesterday. Yep. I, th- I like saying he's going to defend it yesterday. yesterday. He's going <laughs> to defend it yesterday. Yes. That's funny. Uh, Trent Beretta says he was in Ring of Honor for years and had nothing to show for it. He's one of those guys I assume was in Ring of Honor, but I had no he idea he, if he actually was. So yep. 
I just assume. He was. Uh, Joe says Trent Beretta is rich in friendship. He is here to make him realize he is facing Samoa Joe or uh, something like that. Yeah. Um, that See, the way I phrased it makes it sound stupid because, of course, he knows he's facing Samoa Joe. Um, it was something like that, though. I promise Joe didn't say it. Like, it wasn't stupid. No, Joe, I love Joe's promo style because he just sounds like a badass, right? That basically keeps it simple and is more interested in speaking with his actions in the ring. And actually, Trent has impressed me on the mic lately, too, because I liked all of those brief interactions with Wheeler Yuta, right? Before Yuta left the best friends. I thought Trent sounded good there, and I thought he sounded good here, too. So, um, yeah, I like this little interaction. Um, yeah, I liked it, too. I saw a little package. I definitely want to see this. It could be good. So that's, that's yeah. why I want to watch Rampage. I want to see this. We can I check think, it out um, tonight. Uh, and uh, Swerve versus Darby. And then there's oh there's Keith Lee versus Colton Gunn. Don't exactly. get me started on that. Um, and next we go to our main event, which is Sky Guevara and the ladder match mm-hmm. uh, for the TNT title. Um, you know, did you notice on the Minitron they had like um the TNT title there because they did it for champions, but they also had like a uh, Guevara and Conti on there. I did not notice yeah, that. It's like um that picture they used when he won the title of them. Like about to kiss or whatever, right? And like that was an interesting thing. Um, <laughs> it was a thing that was interesting. Notable Sky avoids a baseball side dropkick. Guevara coming to the outside, then hits him with the ladder. Like kind of backs up because he's holding the ladder horizontally, so that kind of worked. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a German suplex on the ramp by Guevara, which I thought Sky took pretty well. He did. Um, Guevara goes to repeat that that lat that top ladder cutter spot from the uh match with cody yes but actually like sky had it scouted and uh countered it with a cutter of his own despite so. jr not noticing and saying that sammy got all of that one yeah right? <laughs> <laughs> even though he did not get he did not hit the move at all but it's okay JR. yeah but i thought that was cool like it was back and like sky like it's like when they used like it the, looked he, good he did his homework but like, exactly i mean he did it looked good yeah um Kavar hit a standing spanish line to a barbed wire ladder also looked good i thought yep um there's a bunch of nonsense with lambert van dan conti yeah and, conti uh, hits that nice like really nice boot low blow and gets um gets booed mer- like for low blowing dan lambert who the crowd hates more than anybody so it, that was the thing i sort of put at the beginning the dynamic was a bit rough because it's basically heel versus heel but the crowd then jet uh, for sure decided they wanted sky to win right and did not want sammy so they the crowd got into it um and found their person to cheer for, for sure, by the time it ended. Which is weird, because you still like full American top team. Like, right. It's, it's so weird. Um, Sky and Guevara climbed the ladder to Conti on Sky's back, trying to keep him away, and then Van Zandt's on Guevara. Um, just, atop- to, just to nitpick that, like, Paige Van Zant is an accomplished fighter. and Couldn't, you're, like, choke him out. You're trying to tell me that her chokehold is so ineffective that you can just climb a ladder with her on your back choking you out, right? That's a so fair point. that was a little bit of yeah, a... I didn't even think To of nitpick that. that. Um, I talked a lot. I thought it was kind of interesting. Guevara uh, flips off Sky. Not literally. I mean, he gives him the finger. Right. And then Sky bites it. So I thought that was kind of... That was kind of funny. Yes. Um, Guevara shoves Sky off and is about to grab it, but then Sky tips the ladder. Guevara falls back first on the barbed wire ladder landed pretty much perfectly i yep, thought on that sure yep um Guevara jumps back up sky knocks him down again and retrieves the title so he's a two-time champ so now we have another multi-time tnt champion because Sup- very not surprised toss this title around i was surprised they, they don't generally hot potato any titles here right they so don't. i'm it's wondering really weird but did you mention the spot where sammy did whatever that flip was and basically missed sky and like yeah came he did within like it. a phoenix and i felt like he was within an eyelash of breaking his neck there to be honest because he did not you could see i think sky stepped forward to try and base for him but didn't quite get there right it looked like sammy landed really hard <clears throat> for sure but anyways, I ended up quite enjoying this match, um, despite the involvement, not because of the involvement of Lambert and Van Sant. I, I don't mind Conti getting involved, because again, I think that's part of this really strong heel act, is that she will get involved. Really good spots in this. Um, the cutter off the ladder, the uh, Spanish fly, and even the finishing spot with Sammy hitting the barbed wire, barbed wire ladder looked really good. Uh, the crowd got into the finishing sequence especially, I thought. I mean, I'm not sure about the decision to go back to Scorpio Sky as champion so quickly, because I really think heal Sammy with that belt and Tay by, or sorry, Tai by his side um, would be amazing. But I'm gonna give AEW the benefit of the doubt, right? That again, it feels like maybe Sammy and Conti are going to be doing that mixed tag match and then moving on. Um, so I'm happy for Scorpio Sky because he's pretty cool. But I don't, 
I don't love titles changing hands this quickly, personally. But it's not a regular thing in AEW, so I'm not too concerned yet, but it's not my favorite. But I, I really did enjoy this match. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I I liked it a lot, too. Um, it was pretty good. I could have done without the interference stuff, but it wasn't, like, overly intrusive, like I a agree. coffin match. It was right at the line of, like, it was, it was fine, because there's going to be people involved with everyone at ringside, so it didn't... I mean, I didn't love the the choking and climbing up the ladder spot, but that's just me being picky. I think. Yeah, it wasn't as bad as the coffin match. Right. Um, you, that, uh, yeah, that, you're right in that regard. Yes. Um, some of the spots were cool. I like the Guevara um, looking for the repeat spot from the Cody match, but Sky to counter works as a callback and also makes Sky look kind of smart for and having that ready. Executed really well. Yeah, for too. sure. Yeah. Um, I, I, it's so nice. I like they do that clean because that's the thing you, that could really go wrong. Oh right? yeah, really go like, wrong. Um, like the ladders almost tipped over last time. They're like the yes. rest were it, which I mean looks like makes it look fake, but also at the same time, like are, isn't that it doesn't make it look fake because like that's the referee's that whole purpose, yes. like to keep them safe. Right. Right. Um, the barbed wire ladder finally happened because I, I I don't remember really like when or why, but I I had pictured that in my head a few times. Like this would be funny if they ever did a barbed wire ladder, just because the whole purpose of the ladder is to climb it, but the purpose of barbed wire is to make it so like you don't want to touch it, like on right. fences and stuff. So it's like a catch twenty two, which I think is really funny because like <laughs> it's just funny. I just always think there's some ring crew there where it's like, hey, you your job today, you need to wrap some barbed wire around this ladder and shove it under the ring, right? Like somebody's <laughs> job is to get these things ready. How do you do that cool. without like cutting yourself? Well, right? I, so maybe it's not real barbed wire this time. I don't know. I didn't see Sammy's back after. No, it, I but... mean like setting it up. Yeah, like because so... I don't know how you're like wrapping that around like safely. I, I, I would be curious to do that. Um. I, I like that they used it, though, because I'm almost positive that's something new, at least for the mainstream, right? Like, I yeah. don't, I've never seen that before. I've, I've thought of that a few times, but I don't, I don't think I've ever seen that before. So that's cool. Um, what did you think of the show? Uh, in ring, I thought the show was... It's interesting, because there weren't any matches that blew me away, but like I've been saying throughout, I think every match kind of did its job and was at least enjoyable. There was nothing I didn't like, right? Like... Dax Cash opener was good, but a bit short for my taste, and there's still another level they can get to, but it was good. Um, and I thought the ladder match was a lot of fun. And then in between, everything was solid and kind of did what it needed to do, I thought. And it was nice to have a women's match on tonight's show that got had something of consequence, right? Two pretty pushed stars, and they got at least 11 minutes of time. Um, Segment-wise, I wasn't as impressed. The House of Black thing was kind of a miss for me, even though it's setting up a match that I think will be awesome. The the JAS stuff is just kind of missing me, and they were on a couple times this show, so that's not my favorite. And then I think you would agree the Hater Storm Riot stuff was not very successful either, but then the other segments were fine. So for me, it all grades out to being a B show, uh, mostly enjoyable, nothing amazing that I want to uh, recommend people rush out and see if they didn't see. But again, from top to bottom, I was entertained by the show, and the in-ring stuff I thought was good and all served a purpose. So overall, a good show, but not amazing. So a B for me. Mm-hmm. And you? Um, so I like the opener. I mean, I think we both agreed like it could be better, but I like I think that was pretty good. Yep. Um, the Blackpool Comic Club squash, good for what it was. Uh, Arch Award though, pretty solid. Um, I think generally good in reaction. Like I think the street fight was fine. Um. The ten man tag was alright. I think the ladder match was one of the better ones for sure. Um, I like that. I think barbed wire ladder, cool innovation. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm just looking at segments. Uh, I like the. I think punk promos were fine. Uh, I like Sky the and Guevara. The two short promos they had were pretty good. Uh, I don't care for the Tony Storm stuff. I think Draft Express one was pretty good because, like you said, I think Jungle Boy seems he's better. getting better for sure. Um, I like the Kingston segment um a lot with the. Jazz. You did. Yep. All right, I like Kingston's part of that, at least. Um, the MJF promo was uh, solid, and I, I like seeing Phoenix back in the House of Black segment. I think generally a fine show, Um, just around average, like pretty middle of the road, Um, nothing you need to check out, but a good show if you happen to be watching. I agree. So I think a B grade is fair. Nice. All right, well, we're going to take a break from overanalyzing wrestling and talk about some trivia in a segment we like to call Off the Top of His Head. All right, so this week we are already on chapter 10 of the trivia book oh, I have, oh. and it is SmackDown trivia. I think we'll do all of them because there's only 22, cool, and some cool. of them are fairly easy. It ranges from stuff like 
you have to know to stuff like why would you know so we'll see how you do right it's, it's jumping all over the it place. is first one's really hard ready on what day of the week does smackdown air friday <laughs> that was tough wait could i say yesterday and still be right i suppose so on what network does smackdown currently air fox correct so so far we're starting to real hard gets a bit harder what year did the first episode of smackdown air 2000 i mean 99 correct good save it is 99 on what network did smackdown initially air that's tough usa i don't know no so your options are upn fx the cw or tnt fx no the first one upn correct The opening theme song of WWE SmackDown is a song by a famous rock and roll band. Is it still currently that song? Which band is it? ACDC? Correct. Are you ready? Is the right answer. Is that still the theme? I assume so. I honestly don't know. I remember that's what it was when they rebranded it to go to Fox. Right. Because I remember it was SmackDown Live for a while. This this makes sense. Uh, So SmackDown has had special episodes in honor of all but one of these superstars. Okay. So who did they not have a special for? Cena, Vince McMahon. The Rock, The Undertaker. So all but one who has not had a special episode. Rock? No. Cena? No. Vince? Yes. Vince Really? I assume Vince would have one. True or false, why would you know this? Ed Kosky is the creator of WWE SmackDown. Who's Ed Kosky? I don't know. True? No, it's false. He's the head writer. I don't even know. Or sorry, a lead writer. I don't even know. I don't know who that is. WWE SmackDown has aired in how many countries? That's tough, too. Three, five, seven, or nine? Seven. Correct. <laughs> Nicely done. WWE SmackDown held a special, special episode called A Tribute to the Troops, where, where was the live broadcast held? Do you the want the troops. options? So USA, Vietnam, Iraq, Israel. Vietnam. No. Israel. No. Other one. Iraq, yes. In what year did WWE SmackDown celebrate its 1,000th episode? I feel 2018. Like this, I was going to say, I feel like this is something you know. I'm going to double check you. Was, it's true. Uh, Rey Mysterio qualified for the World Cup when he beat Nakamura. Because remember the tournament that Shane McMahon won? Right. Uh, and oh then my there's God, the Evolution yes. segment, I remember. Oh, and also Big Show turned heel for the 1,000th time. <laughs> Literally, um, possibly. <laughs> um, Because uh, he, he uh, cost the New Day the tag toes. He helped the bar for some reason. All but one of these individuals serve as producers of SmackDown. So basically, who is not a producer of SmackDown? Okay. Triple H, Vince McMahon, Bruce Pritchard, Kevin Dunn. Triple H. Correct. Mm. It seems like an easy one because the rest of them are all back. Well, I guess Triple H has moved into that role now. Yeah, right? but I so feel like he fair. was, I don't know, I don't, I don't see him, I, don't, I, I just don't, didn't think he was. And I knew the other guys were those kind of guys because Bruce Pritchard yes. is always doing stuff. He is. Which um i'll change i don't like the wording of their question so which of these networks has smackdown not been on okay Okay. hulu nbc universal the cw or fox i want to say the cw no oh really um i mean this is hard for us in canada because we sorry what were the other two other than i know it's been on fox hulu um NBC Universal, Fox, and CW. NBC Universal? No, it's Hulu. Like, up here in Canada, we always get it on the same network, All the, regardless of what network. Well, it's always, it's, like, on Sports right. Net 360, I think it is. So yeah. it's been on that, regardless of what network it's on in the States, it comes through on the same. So there's not much chance you're going to know that one. Which famous superstar used the catchphrase SmackDown before the inception of SmackDown? Oh. Get it into is, the mic. Is, you're, like, sitting far away. This is a tough one. Yeah, it is. Uh, I remember thinking the it was rock. Yeah, good. <laughs> I think I remember thinking it was ridiculous that they were naming a show after his catchphrase, but that is an indication of how big he was. True or false? In two thousand eight, WWE SmackDown aired on the CW. Uh, true. False. They're actually going with falses yeah. today. Usually, they're true or false or true. Well, where they zig for all these egg. Which of these women has served the most tenures as GM of SmackDown? Okay. okay. So options are Paige, Vicky Guerrero, Stephanie McMahon, Ronda Rousey. Ronda Rousey is an option? Ronda Rousey really? is an option, but I don't think it's the right uh, option. Vicky? You are saying Vicky Guerrero? And interesting, because as I'm looking here, there are no answers beyond question 14. So this book has provided me without answers. Okay, well, that's that. Uh... So we're just going to assume you're right? 
Because I don't know. I think it it's has either to be. Vicky or Steph. Right. But I, I know Steph was the first one, but I don't know wow. how many times. What great job publishing this book. I did not check ahead of time. It literally has 22 questions and only 14 answers. So should I stop there? Or do you want to just get see which I'll, ones you know I'll, for I'll, sure? Let's, yeah, sure. So we don't have the answers. Let's go. Someone can fact check us. Which commentator pairing was the first ever on SmackDown? Uh, Michael Cole and Taz. Michael Cole and Taz. Is that an option? It is not an option. Uh, so you've got uh, Ross Lawler, Lawler Cole. Lawler Cole. I think that's probably right, but I don't know. What year did the Miz start Miz TV? Uh, 10, 11, 12, or 13? 12. Sure. We'll say you're right. <laughs> Great job. <laughs> Which of these superstars hosted the Peep Show? That uh, we know. Christian. Correct. Um, which of these people served as both GM and commentator of SmackDown? Uh, so we've got JBL, Heyman, Triple H, Otunga. Heyman. I, yes. It was he I know G- he was a GM for because he, he created Team Angle. JBL wasn't, right? So I think that's got to be right. Uh, and the last one that we don't have an answer to, true or false, the segment known as Carlito's Cabana was originally on SmackDown. Yeah. I think so. Because he know. debuted there, I think, right? Yes. Did you know, so here's, I'm pulling questions from did you know now, since they were crappy with the answers. SmackDown was created to be a direct, direct competitor to which WCW show? Thunder. Correct. Um, that's funny. They made a mistake there, too. Cause it says, was created to be a direct competitor to WCW's Thursday Night SmackDown. What is this book doing? I don't know. This is, um, uh, let's see. These are all not that interesting. So I guess we'll wrap it up there because, sorry, this was not our most thorough uh, off the top of his head due to yeah, the book was, being pretty lame. But I guess it's my fault to check ahead of time, I guess, you or my job. ahead of time. So that's what I get. But anyways, I apologize. If any of you know the answers to those, good for you. We'll get back to a more normal one next week, hopefully. I mean, we ho- I mean unless, unless you forget to check again. Yeah, it could be true. Um, so could now be. we're going to go back to talking about more wrestling and what I thought was a pretty disappointing episode of NXT UK. So I was so annoyed by this show that I had to go back and reflect and sort of adjust my overall grade because in the moment I was pretty annoyed <laughs> by this show um, but you're right I was probably being a bit harsh right. so I went back and revised my grade so let's talk about it I guess it starts out with um, we're right into an opening match which is symbiosis t-bone and primate taking on the returning wild boar who's teaming up with Mark Andrews for some reason so the idea here is that wild boar was once part of a tag team with Primate and was screwed over by Eddie Dennis, the leader of Symbiosis. So he's basically trying to get at Eddie Dennis for most, most of this match, right? Is, is I think the end end game is going to be wild boar taking on Eddie Dennis Dennis. feels like to me. Um, So all four brawl, even before the bell rings here, it starts and we get Mark Andrews quickly focusing on the left leg of T-bone early on. Then a little bit later, wild boars in and he's dominating Primate. Um, we get double team sentons by the baby faces for a near fall. Uh, Tyson T Bone ends up shifting the momentum with a fall away slam to Mark Andrews. So then the heels take their turn in control. They isolate Andrews and target his back for quite a while. Actually liked the back targeting. They were pretty um, varied back attack, which I liked. Varied back attack. Eventually, Mark Andrews uses his quickness to escape from the heels. He makes the hot tag to Wild Boar, who dominates both heels, sends them out to the floor. We get a corner spear and a half-and-half half suplex by Wild Boar to Primate for a near fall. We then get an Eddie Dennis distraction. That leads to a brief flurry from Symbiosis. I thought they were going to win off of it that. It looked like it, right? Yeah. But then I was surprised, too. The baby faces do eventually take over, and they win with a shooting star press by Mark Andrews. Post-match, Wild Boar chases Eddie Dennis through the crowd with a dog collar and chain. So, gee, I wonder where this is going. You've got the classic Eddie Dennis keeps running away from Wild Boar. Wild Boar has introduced a dog collar and a chain. I think, no, Dennis had those um, from the entrance. So I think that's what we're, I bet you we're going to end up getting a dog collar match between the I two. didn't even notice that he had the dog collar when but, he was chasing uh, him. We'll see. Um, so I did like Symbiosis' varied attack on Andrew's back. I thought this match was kind of nothing special, just like a solid basic TV tag match, I guess. And it's furthering the angle of... Wild Boar really wanted to get his hands on Eddie Dennis and Eddie Dennis doing whatever he can to get away from Wild Boar. So I guess that got furthered. I thought this was okay, but nothing special. And unfortunately, this was the match of the 
of this episode best match i think by a long shot and it wasn't <laughs> that great so that right. tells you well, how i feel beating out Zaya brookside and von wagner right so what did you think of this one any other um, thoughts i i thought it was okay i think um the back target was fine i, I didn't mind like there was also like um they where you thought the finish was coming and then i guess yeah it, it kind of um lasts on for a bit um yeah i guess it, it's it's just kind of stalling the end game of boar and dennis which i think, I think so. will be fine um like if it is a dog collar match i guess then that's less interesting. fine in my opinion but anyways people I, tied to each other limits so many things it's just not I my don't favorite remember last time WWE's done that yeah like they did a strap match in 2020 and then i don't know if they did a dog collar match since like yeah ages ago not a big fan because i didn't even love the what was the most recent one mjf and whatever mjf and punk which was and that's mjf and punk which i like less than most people it seems oh, so. for sure uh we then get mr stone because he's not oh, robert, the FK, nameplate robert said, stone the nameplate said robert stone they probably recorded off. this before the new mandate came out i would assume for sure um he tells us that the rumors are true and that von wagner is here in nxt uk he will prove that it's Wagner's world, and we're just living in it. Um, so not that I don't like Robert Stone. I guess I asked this question before I found out why Bivens was leaving. But my thing was, I like Robert Stone too. But like, how did he d- survive cuts while Bivens didn't? But I guess that's because Bivens had indicated he was not going to renew. So that makes more yeah. sense now. Um, so earlier in the week, we find out it was Trent Seven and Tyler Bay are walking outside talking about defending their titles the week before they successfully defeated Smith and Carter again, right? Um, right, so I it, think I missed that. It becomes clear that Bait is not happy about the cheating, but that Seven's okay with it because Seven just keeps saying we will do anything to hold on to these championships and Bait's always shooting him a look of like, I'm not really on board with that. Um, so Trent Seven says he wants Sid Scala to find them some worthy opponents. And I'm at this point with this tag division, I'm not sure who that's going to be. GYV. Right? Like, it could be if they come back. That Run would actually back. be kind of mm-hmm. cool. Um, so again, we're getting the slow burn here. These two clearly are not on the same page about what they're willing to do to hold on I'm to sure these you titles. I'm just um, you do a split because I don't really see them as either of them as heels, even if Trent Seven's like... I think Seven he's, is. He's just desperate, but I don't even see him as a heel, though. It'll like, be hard, right, for him to for turn. Sure. But that looks like where they're going. I'm fine with the split. Uh, I would love to see Tyler Bate go somewhere else and because he's awesome but there's not really much upper mobility in and the only like, option is now they'll ship him over to 2.0 which i don't want him there exactly so i so, think like as much of a small stage as uk is it's like one of its best bet i guess like i don't i know it's, it's weird, weird to say yeah um so scala is then interrupted by any dennis he's terrified of wild boar wants something done about it i thought it's gonna go for a cage match so scala informs dennis that he will face wild boar in a dog collar match with symbiosis banned from ringside so we do get um obviously what we thought was coming out of the whole dog collar situation i just go cage match you know? and boar wild boar runs in chases eddie dennis away so it's the idea of dennis just keeps escaping so they're gonna chain them together so that he can't escape sure i'm not a huge eddie dennis fan i haven't seen him wrestle in a while so we'll see where it goes we then get the next match, which is Angel Hayes. Sure, don't know much about her. Taken on Zaya Brookside. And it sure felt to me like the boos for Brookside were pumped in for at sure. the beginning. There's not enough people there. And they're not booing. They're not actively right. booing, but there was loud boos. Um, so Zaya works Hayes' arm early on. It was basically a really long arm ringer that was not super impressive. And then, Yeah, it was like just like a, I guess, air quotes, technical wrestling, but like... Not varied. Just like not yeah it was just like a long arm ringer like not much there like it's like the basic thing someone would do to look like they're technical wrestler and right. they're just not really and not. then my favorite spot from this is when the patch of Zia-Lee's hair just falls out and lands on the mat because clearly yes, she's got funny. she's got pretty long extensions in and one of them just released and was sitting on the mat it was pretty awesome yeah then funny. we get some kicks by Hayes lead to a near fall another lengthy submission by Zaya in a pretty short match already um and then we get one more flurry from Hayes leading to a near fall. And then Zaya's new heavy, right? Eliza Alexander, she's there. So she gets up on the apron and that distracts Hayes enough so Brookside can win with a classic distraction roll up. On a jobber. Yep, WWE trope. They can't escape it. Love the uh, distraction roll up. Jobber, dude. The heels continue to attack after the match until Amal runs down to make the save. So clearly that's the program here is going to be Amal, Zaya, Brookside. I'm not sure who's excited for that, but I don't mind Amal, but 
And I mean, they're both I fine, really care. but yeah, it's nothing I care about. No glaring mistakes in this match. It just wasn't really interesting, right? It was five minutes um, with a bunch of like, l well, a couple lengthy like submission spots that weren't that interesting. The entire thing was really predictable. You get the classic WWE distraction finish and a beat down with the baby face running in. So I thought Hayes' offense looked pretty weak and all of this was just kind of a very, very basic thing in the middle of this show. You? Yeah, there's like the long arm ringer thing, which I just think kind of took up time than like the other long kind of submission spot and there's just like a lot of basic offense like Hayes is just like it's a jobber and so she got like way too much and then like it's a distraction roll right. for a squash match like or what should have been a squash match and if you want to do a couple submission spots great but in between those it better be some pretty fast-paced action and cool looking stuff and it wasn't there's just not much here right. like and it's just Agreed. like not they didn't use the time great so a kid now approaches Dempsey as he's training swinging a sledgehammer or something like that a kid basically wants a rematch. He he said something about talking to him while the other members of uh, D Familia weren't around. I think is what he said to start, and then basically wants a rematch with Dempsey so they can set the record straight. Um, and he says he thinks that something in Dempsey's heritage will make him agree. Like basically, I feel like he's, he's kind of saying he's Regal's kid. I feel like this is like obviously budget budget version. But I feel like this is Luke Skywalker and Darth Vader, where he's kind of going, they're still good in you, I know there is, <laughs> kind of yes. thing, right? Like, yes. you're not fully committed to the dark side, there's still good in there, there's something in you that's not going right. to let you yes, that's definitely what it turn is, around this sure. match. I feel like that's where they're going, and that's fine, that's a, that's a story to tell at least, right? So I'm okay with it. Um, we then get Sid Scala, he, oh god, here we go. He introduces the newest NXT UK acquisition, and it's Damon Kemp who had a cup of coffee in NXT. I was NXT so worried they were going to say talent. Von Wagner. I was like, oh my God, they're going well, to say Von Wagner. And then, yeah. Damon Kemp. So com very unexciting. Um, of course, they love him because he is an amateur wrestler. He gets a chance to speak briefly, says he's excited to learn about the gritty British style. And then Johnny Saint comes in, speaking of gritty Br British style, I think was the the point and shakes Kemp's hand so it was really short and I'm surprised Johnny Saint showed up for once I think Kemp is friends with Gable Steveson so that's they look similar what's gonna prolong his time in this company probably um so he's got an amateur background he might be fine but he accomplished nothing in NXT this is not a signing worth announcing on TV and it's just further evidence of NXT sort of bleeding into NXT UK which is not something I want at all at all mm -hmm. Um, Saxon Huxley, speaking of NXT 2.0, taken on Von Wagner in the final, I, I hesitate to call it a main event, um, because it is the final match of the show, but there's lots of stuff after this for some reason. Right. Um, it's one of those weird shows where it's like, you have a match and there's still like a bunch of segment stuff Like to come. several segments, yeah. like what, one, two, three, four, five Could things after the Could have just left the main match. event segment, right? Like, yes. It, it's odd. So Huxley gets some offense in early before a knee by Wagner shifts the momentum. Get a butterfly suplex by Wagner, which is about as good as anything he's capable of doing. Huxley with a lengthy flurry, ending with a top rope, clo top rope sorry, clothesline for a near fall. Wagner ends up catching Huxley, uh, shifts him onto his shoulders, which always looks kind of impressive, and hits his, I always describe it as his awkward finisher. So what is his finisher? Like a he had, fireman's was, carry neckbreaker? This time it was kind of a Death Valley driver, but it's still right. kind of lame. It's not... I don't know which is better, this or like that underhook side slam he did. It's never clear what this move is, and I've seen it like five times now, and I'm still like, is it a Death Valley driver? Is it a fireman's carry neckbreaker? Is it just some kind of other... I don't know. But anyways, it's fine. He wins in four minutes because this is now becoming NXT 2.0, and this is what you get. So post-match, Wagner says that Saxon, Saxon was the first of many to fall in NXT UK, and that we are living in Von Wagner's world. So I honestly I, forgot who he faced until you mentioned it again. Honestly, just another Von Wagner match. Slow, basic stuff, where the rookie beats a veteran. Um, Huxley actually got some offense in on this, but lost as expected. I, I was unimpressed by this. I don't imagine you were impressed by anything here. <sighs> He's just so I, basic. I watched this to get away from Von Wagner. Right. And I, now they're bringing him to us. I, like, out of all the people who right. I wanted to see on on NXT UK come from, coming from 2.0, this is, like, by far one of the the ones I want to see least. If not the one I want to see least, but, I mean, we'll get there. I think they have plans for this guy, man. They're trying to get him seasoning all over the place. He sucks. He's just so... Like, I don't even think he sucks. He's just... 
so basic and unexciting and like anti-charisma for me. I just don't want to watch you do basic big man stuff and win in four minutes. I don't want to see him do anything. All he does, but anyways. So then Gallus are doing a cheesy looking press conference. I thought this looked kind of lame. Wolfgang tells us that Gallus are united and stronger than ever because they've been sort of having issues with some tension right, within I the group. I thought it's weird they did a press conference. Like that was an interesting way to... You know what annoyed the crap out of me mm-hmm. and made it feel super, super fake? was the constant pictures being snapped. Like, it was like there was paparazzi there. Just It was the constant sound of pictures being taken, which I was like, that's not happening for a Gallus having a little press conference. I, I, th- I thought it took away from it, to be right. honest. Uh, Mark Coffey says that every team has a bad day and it's not going to happen again with Gallus. Joe Coffey then says it's the Gallus boys on top and they are starving for success. So again, between the sort of setup for this and the constant flashing of cameras made it feel really fake and silly to me. Yeah, and I, I, don't, I feel like you could accomplish this like without a press conference. Too. I agree. And I don't really care what happens to Gallus at this point. Not that they're not capable in the ring. Um, they're one of the better ones, but probably. Yeah, I don't care that much yeah, what I'm happens not, with them. I'm not super invested. That it was whatever. And we then get a quick little vignette that Tiger Turan will debut next week. So I'm assuming that that's... Amir, Amir Jordan, Jordan and a mask. I think he lost a loser leaves a while ago. Right, like a and he's ago. he's coming after Kenny Williams pretty hard. So that would be the only person I think that would have reason to do that. So I'm sure that's who it is. But I don't. I honestly don't mind the classic like known guy under a mask to circumvent some sort of suspension or whatever. That's a classic. Yeah, like, wrestling done, trope. like um, Mr. America. Right, Midnight and, Rider for me was Dusty Rhodes back in the probably mm-hmm. the eighties. Is right. the one I remember. Oh, really? Um, yeah. I know there's another one. I'm trying to think, but I don't. I don't remember. I guess. I don't know. It's like is there has been more for that, sure. Um, because Zeke's like it's a whole. Oh, I know you're Elias, but you're I'm right. No, but there's I'm nothing not we can do about it. Yeah, it's that. It's basically that. Um, yeah. So that 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 will be interesting. I agree. I think I don't see it being anyone else. I don't either. Um, we then get an Isla Dawn Mako kind of back and forth hype package ahead of their quote unquote World of Darkness match, whatever that means. That's happening next week. So they go back and forth about ending this feud. Um, Mako basically wants to hurt Isla. Isla will finally win the title, etc., etc. There was more, but I'm I'm going really quick through this show. Um, so I hope this stipulation is cool, right? Like, because I don't know what a World of Darkness match means, but I'm skeptical to say the least. I am definitely skeptical. Right. So I'm hopeful, but I'm not sure it's going to be anything I could interesting. Ease, I could see this being all right at best or yeah. easily being supernatural crap. Because I like both of these two. I know I like Isla Dawn more than you, um, but I will say this doesn't feel like a fresh matchup. We say it every week, right? Like, where else do you go in the women's division here? You've got Mako Satomura at the top, and then everybody is several tiers below her. So having a believable right. opponent for her right now is really hard, I think. Um but then maybe this is, I can't even say that with a straight face. It's going to say, because maybe it's Lash Legend, because she's here next. <laughs> so uh, they're just bringing over a couple of our favorites, right? Von Wagner. And now Lash Legend is here too. Why is this happening is what's in my notes. And not only is she here, but she's going to get tangled up with our boy Noam Dar next week, because she's going to be on the Supernova sessions. That made me sad. So at least she's only going to be talking, which is her strength. Uh, not to say that that is not, a not that she's good at it relative but... to her in ring work, right? Right. Her speaking and her charisma right. are better. Okay, that that's fair. But still, very disappointed she's here. Right. Um, I've been saying it for weeks on NXT 2.0. She's not ready for TV. They brought two people who I like. Two of the people I wanted to see last. I think this is evidence that Vince feels like nobody watches this show and it doesn't matter because two people that to me need just using it as more experience for the crappy right that need more seasoning it's like go over there no one will see you more so the the crappy ones who are like major parts and that he probably likes i agree because i think he sees lash as like wow she's really big and she has an athletic background right so let's strap the rocket to her brother yeah i don't know um we then get the main event quote unquote of this show which is the contract signing i guess between um, Ilya Dragunov and Jordan Devlin. So we start off with Sid Scala and Johnny Saint are in the ring. They introduce the competitors in the rematch. Um, Dragunov's in a dark suit and Devlin is in like a loud, obnoxious, unbuttoned shirt, which I thought was a fair contrast. Devlin claims that he is this brand and that all of the attention 
this match is getting is because he is the one that is the challenger. Facts. Dragunov says that his nightmare is to see Devlin as the NXT UK champion, so he's going to make sure it doesn't happen. Ilya decides to raise the stakes, and it looks like Devlin agrees. He suggests that whoever loses the match has to leave NXT UK. So they both sign the contract. Scala makes the official announcement of the match and the stipulation. Devlin immediately goes for a headbutt, but Dragunov dodges it, lands one of his own. They end up brawling. Dragunov sets a table up in the corner, but it ends up coming back to haunt him as Devlin uses Scala as a shield to bro- block the Torpedo Moscow, right, I believe? Yeah, I like that. Um, and then Devlin lands a headbutt to Dragunov. I and, like the way he does his headbutt. And puts him through the table with a Devlin inside that actually looked pretty good. Devlin's so our final it. scene is Devlin grabbing the belt. You should never do that. And Should've raising it above his head as the show ends. My only issue with the stipulation is who, what happens to the loser? Where do they go? Where, NXT, what? bud. I'm afraid. I don't want either of them there. Uh, and who do you think it is? Because I really don't know. Uh, who do you think that they... I think Devlin... I, I don't know, but I think Devlin actually has a decent chance this time. Like, there's big stakes. I could see them wanting Dragunov in, in 2.0. I don't see Vince... Like, cause, cause I feel like there's got to be some sort of interest in 2.0 right now, right? Yes. Because like, they use it for development. I could see him wanting Dragunov there. I don't see him wanting to bring Devlin there. See, I honestly, I honestly don't know, which is kind of cool because then yeah, I don't no, know who's sure. going to win the match, right? I guess is the is the bottom line because I'll I'll go into this not being sure. Right. Um. Neither of them. I guess what I'm saying is both of them are veterans, so. If they go to NXT 2.0, they're going to be in like the Pete Dunn role, where you're putting over young talent I before you leave. I see sort of them thing. more interested in Dragonov. I don't. Yeah. I don't see them wanting Devlin. He's essentially, I think he's like a small, a slightly smaller Finn Balor, and we yeah. know how much they love Finn Balor. So right. So I, I see. I don't really know. Like, like you said, it's really up in the air. But I see it more likely to be Devlin. But at least there's stakes for the match, right? I've, and I yeah, and I sure. don't know who's gonna I win. Really hope, so I really hope it's Devlin. UK is the last show worth watching, it, and I and think it's slipping this, this week for me. Yeah, it's slipping. <laughs> this is his only time. Right. Like, um, I really hope Devlin gets that. Even if he gets like a bit of a run, like he deserves a run. I, he's been there for a long time. He's been there yes, since the first tournament. He has. Like, he's, been cool since the first tournament yep. like um i i really hope he gets that um i think it'd be really cool i hope he didn't jinx himself yeah i don't I, that, that's the thing so i'm int- the match should be cool um that i didn't really be, love the yeah, empty arena one. episode like, I, I liked the it. match but i didn't like right. that it was empty arena agree right yeah yeah same so i thought this was like a pretty standard segment neither man said a lot to be honest we did get physicality um, we did the suplex through the table looked good, and I guess the added stipulation of the loser having to leave NXT UK, but it didn't really feel like a main event segment to me. I don't think there was anything wrong with it necessarily. Um, so it was fine. It was probably one of the better things on the show, I guess, but that is not saying a ton. So overall, this felt a lot like um, NXT 2.0, and that is not a good thing by any stretch. So what I mean by that. No match here was longer than seven minutes, right? And all of them were pretty basic. And, and one of them featured Von Wagner. Yeah, that too. They were pretty basic and unspectacular. Then as a bonus, right, we get a rookie beats a veteran in a four minutes in what was the final match. Um, and I thought this was just a really weak episode in ring. Probably the weakest I remember seeing. Um, At least since, like, definitely the weakest, I'd say, since we picked it up. Yes. Also, like NXT, multiple debuts, many quick segments and videos that made this show feel on the cusp of being frantic which and is how, on a segment. how yes and how i describe nxt 2.0 some weeks it's just frantic right they're just trying to get so much in in a two-hour show so this they only had an hour um i thought the final segment was fine the stipulation added is fine as well but that was nowhere near enough to save this show for me uh really disliked this episode really disappointed that 2.0 is infecting this brand as i would call it at least it didn't infect the logo <laughs> this is the worst episode i could remember um, so initially I gave it an F, but you're right. I It wasn't awful, awful. It's just I, I'm seeing it going down a path I really don't want to see because I'm close to quitting 2.0 and I don't want it to infect this show to the point where I want to quit it too. But so I upgraded it to a D this week. It's not good show, um, but a, just enough to not fail, I guess. What did you think? Yeah, none of the matches are worth watching. They're not even no. worth what little time they would take up. Nothing is worth watching on this week's I'm... show very angry that von wagner is coming here like von wagner he's 
Von Wagner. He's like, and he's going to dominate. Anti charisma, like you said, he's genuinely a a turn off. I do not want to watch him. Right. And Lash Legends coming next week. That sucks. That's going to infect Noam Dar. Like, why is Noam Dar actually involved? Like, none of the matches. Okay, like, none of the segments really hit. I think the contract timing was pretty solid, but, yep. like, that doesn't really save a show. I think a D is fair. Like, this is not great. Nothing you really need to see. I agree. Like, I like the clip of Devlin, like, using him as a shield and then doing the head on the cool. Devlin side. But, like, other than trying to find that clip, you don't really need... Yeah, I don't. You don't need to find anything. Yep. Do better, NXT UK. Stop I bringing know. in all these two point oh people. Two point oh seeping in. It's it's scary. All right, that's wrapping up that review, and we'll move into. I don't think we have a lot, but we're gonna go into our next segment, which is called any other wrestling business. All right, so the only thing I think we're going to cover in any other wrestling business this week is NXT our favorite show. NXT 2.0. So we didn't put it in our news, but remember you we both saw the the sort of headline about they sat the women down and told them they needed to be sexier on like NXT. Like Mandy Rose. Right, they need to be more like Mandy Rose. Um so I say that because this episode starts out with the camera zoomed in tight on a pair of wrestling boots, and then we really slowly and creepily pan up the body of Nikita Lyons because they have tapped in. She is very popular among people for being attractive on social media right now. Oh, I've seen that. Yeah, I follow like so they are um, trying this to one hit. podcast. Like, sometimes they post like it's for because she's like they love her. Yes, I'm thick. Yes, is exactly, exactly. Um, so. Basically, we objectify her really quickly as commentary make note of the crowd reaction that that camera angle got, right? So they're like, what a way to kick off tonight. Like, felt kind of creepy to me, right? As we slowly move Bruce up this Fritcher. woman's body. And listen to that reaction where a couple things I copied down. That's nice. So that moves us right into this banger of a match. I wonder it's... how, like, you just stand there while camera's like... I know, right? Like, I, 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 I don't know. How do you do that with the, like... It's got to feel weird, but, yeah. like... I don't know. And then the commentary is going, what a way to start the show. Yeah. Look at her body. So weird. (laughs) Nikita Lyons taking on Lash Legend. This is a rematch, I believe, right? It is. Lucky for you. So commentary start out spending so, and I caps locked, so much time telling us how everyone on the internet thinks Nikita Lyons is hot, right? So they spend a lot of time, but it's funny because they won't come out and just say it. They say, like, she's getting a lot of attention and blah, blah, blah. They're not saying it's because people think she's attractive. I don't know why they're afraid to say it. But they basically hint around at how popular she is online. So Nikita hits a series of kicks, including a spinning kick, spinning back kick. But then what bugs me, right? So she hits, like, three or four kicks that look decent. But then she has to sell a single chop from Lash like it had more effect than all of those kicks, right? Mm -hmm. So that's annoying. Um, awkward rope running by both of them, then a Thez press by Lyons and some awkward strikes to Lash. Uh, Lyons climbs onto the apron um, from the floor at one point and just stands there and waits for Lash to knock her back onto the floor in what I thought was a bit mistimed spot. We get a mount by Lash with some awful looking strikes to Lyons. The crowd does definitely seem to be behind Nikita Lyons here, and she wins with her tornado kick. certainly popular. Her tornado kick after about five minutes. Did she do the splits? She did not. She won with a tornado kick and not the splits uh, oh, the leg first drop. match she did that and, I forgot and about then the that. splits. Um, so Natty then comes out, attacks Nikita Lyons after the match is over. Lash Legend joins in to help her until Cora Jade chases Lash away with her skateboard. And then Natty ends up setting, board. setting Jade up for a sharpshooter. But Nikita Lyons kicks Natty off of her and the faces stand tall in the ring to finish this. Obviously, this match was not good. Um, Lash Legend is not ready and offers uh, very little other than size, and she does have a decent big boot. I'll give her that, but that's about it. Look, Lion seems to be a little bit better, but I don't think she's great and certainly not good enough to carry somebody like Lash Legend to a decent match. Um, Mashes like this one make you glaringly aware that you are watching people learn how to do their job, and I'm not sure I want to watch that much longer, because like I said, there's other options where experienced professionals do the same thing, only much better, right? right. Like, do you want to watch a sitcom where... It'd be the... like just watching a wrestling school. <laughs> it's like watching, let's say we were watching The Office, but they've replaced all of these professional experienced actors with people learning to act. Right. Is that really what you want to watch? Or do you want to go watch another show where the actors already know how to act, right? Right. Maybe some people like to watch, and I don't mind watching developmental, but that was back when they already had some talent, right? So I, I don't know. I struggle to watch Yeah, this is like people this. starting from like 
pretty much scratch yes. or like as close as, as close to scratch as you could get yes. while putting them on tv right it's not a good right good not a good plan no. uh we then get tony d'angelo talking about von wagner i, I did enjoy this he refers to von wagner as mr excitement which kind of made me laugh because he's not ironically right so d'angelo or d'angelo won't face quinn tonight since he's not cleared so he'll face uh von wagner instead i don't know what happened to zion quinn but he's out for this show he just wanted to give you this match that you really wanted and then he says wagner or as my typo says wanger <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of funny <laughs> that's pretty good <laughs> right uh wanger will sleep with the fishes because that is the most stereotypical or will statement. d'angelo sleep with a wanger so this is the most stereotypical statement that you could have tony say so that's what because this is like famous mobster <laughs> line yeah that's, that's with famous. the fishes right <laughs> um so it. great it was fine uh roddy strong then talks to the rest of diamond mine about their recent struggles and this is why i was confused because bivens is standing with them this whole time roddy says he won't tolerate it anymore and this team will not crumble like the previous one did referring to undisputed era brutus then pleads his case for the creeds not having the belts yet but roddy cuts him off and says he's just making excuses so he's kind of like being the leader ruling with an iron fist here he's like the mean kind of leader of this group roddy next week speaks good next week he has set up a match for the creeds and it's against the viking raiders who come in um so a lengthy segment here where roddy and the creed speak as bivens stands silent so, the entire time that was I my mean, before i knew bivens was gone i was like why is this the decision they made here? i understand why roddy's allowed to make the match on nxt but how does he have enough pull to get them to nxt because everyone does whatever they want on nxt and he is roddy is so bad in a role like this he is so he is amazing in the ring but he is terrible on the mic and this is now opening up and it's not like He's going to develop, right? He's been wrestling he's for been 20 like years. He's been like this for, and since he's, he's never, been Roddy. So I don't understand. what. The, and the creeds aren't great either. So it makes sense because Bivens is gone, so he's not speaking anymore. And Roddy has been slowly taking over this group. So that's what we're going to get. Um, and I know I should be critical of the Viking Raiders showing up here because I've, similar to what I've said about Dolphin and Natalia, right? That main rosters taught me they're unimportant lower carters. But the difference is... They have history. But also as someone who only watches main roster pay-per-views right now it's honestly like the viking raiders don't exist right it's not like i've seen them losing a lot lately because i don't see them ever because when's what's the last pay-per-view they were on i don't couldn't tell you i don't know right so um basically when i'm watching main roster every week back when i was Dolph and natalia were pretty inconsequential right so i just got hit over the head with like their mid carters they don't really matter Whereas Viking Raiders, it's kind of like they don't even exist. I'm like, oh yeah, they're still around and they're kind of cool. So they kind of don't have the same stink on them that, um, yeah. that Dolph and Natalia have. So I'm a little bit excited to see them get treated as a strong team if that's what's going to happen. For me, I'm like, I'm usually fine with it if it's like a returning yes. person. Like they were tag champs and whatnot. Like that, that's fine. And like Dolph, like has your like natalia i guess did because she remember she faced charlotte and she was yes. in a women's health tournament for some reason but like i mean like she was, wasn't an actual nxt person like Dolph had zero history there so right. i'm okay with them like being there i mean obviously i'm not watching but i'm saying like i don't mind if they're returning as well and the viking raiders are actually awesome like they are so good and they have been made to look so ridiculous remember that huge feud with um street profits which oh, was remember that crappy one of my worst matches cinematic. ever um wait that was, that was backlash 2020 yeah it was awful i think it not not no it was probably 2020 no it was because that was the age of cinema matches yes but a viking raiders creeds match could be really good so and if they want to spring breaking spend some time letting the viking raiders look good i'm fine with that we then get Vaughn Wagner with Mr. Stone taking on Tony D'Angelo. Um, and they copy and paste basically the same story from before because Wade Barrett tells us that Mr. Stone, um, no longer Robert since his real name is Robert. So Stone paid the fine and got the suspension lifted. So this is just really lazy because they did this like a couple months ago or whatever it is. So it's make your own matches anytime, even matches for other people, right? Carmelo Hayes made several matches for other people along the way here. Suspensions are meaningless. Like who runs this place, right? Like what's going on in NXT if you really thought about it as a real place to work? Why don't they just not suspend them and just take money from stone it's like you have a part-time job and you decide when you work and you decide who you work with and what department you work in right and that no boss is ever <laughs> exactly. stepping in and saying anything exactly um, so we get some basic big man stuff from wagner 
Um, D'Angelo really does nothing of note for quite a while here. He later hits a nice belly-to-belly -belly overhead and then follows that with a more standard belly-to-belly, -belly, like the twisting version. Um, so similar to the Lion's Lash dynamic, which I found annoying, D'Angelo hits a flurry ending with a T-bone suplex, but then has to sell a single clothesline, right? So you hit a bunch of moves to this guy, including a decent suplex, but then he hits you with the clothesline and you have to sell it more than he sold your offense, which is just annoying. Um, so Wild and Mendoza, what's his new name? Uh, Cruz del Toro. There you go. They come out, cause a distraction, and Tony's new guys, that tag team of his, come out and take out Legato. Wait, were they are the people who um hit him with the pipe. Attacked. Came uh, out last week. JYV. Or, wait, wasn't there people? No, it wasn't JYV. It was the guy. I don't remember. There was masked people or something last week. Is this them? Yes. So uh, they they weren't in masks last time. They were in their fedoras and everything. Right, but pretty, yes, I'm thinking of something. D'Angelo was still saying like I don't know who they are. So anyways, um. They take out Legato. Escobar hits Tony D'Angelo with the pipe. Uh, D'Angelo barely beats the count to get back into the ring, but walks right into a big boot and loses this match. This got 10 minutes. D'Angelo Wagner got 10 minutes. Mm. Um, again, Wagner slow and basic. I found myself struggling to stay focused on this match. Um, and D'Angelo has looked better than this in the past, but that's always with more experienced people, right? There's not a whole lot he can do work in a match with Wagner. It's their usual veteran versus rookie um, sorry, that's why that usual veteran versus rookie format makes more sense than this, right? You're putting two rookies in together, you're probably not going to get a great match. I think D'Angelo's actually okay in the ring usually, but not good enough to carry Von Wagner. Pretty basic 10-minute match with a distraction finish. Did not enjoy this match. Um, I still do not like the cool, serious Escobar being in a program with the cartoon character of D'Angelo either. What are you talking about? It works perfectly. Kind of bugs me. Um, so Indy and the now-released Persia Parada congratulate <laughs> Roxanne on her win. Toxic Attraction come in and call them trash and credit Wendy Chu for Roxanne's win since she got involved. Roxanne says she's willing to prove it wasn't a fluke with another match tonight. Mandy says some things, and it sounds to me here like Mandy is going to be the one facing Roxanne, which is in fact the case. Seems like an odd choice to me, but okay. Mm -hmm. I didn't think anyone involved in this sounded good. I think Mandy sounds fine, but th the rest of them, including Roxanne, did not sound very good, but at least it was short. Briggs, Jensen, and Fallon Henley are tired of Legato and will take care of business tonight. They start to hype themselves up until Sophia, whatever her face is, walks by, and Jensen gets flustered and distracted because he is girl crazy, Sophia? obviously. Sophia, remember the one that was with Robert Stone and Wagner in the crowd? Ah, Mm -hmm. And now she seems to not be at all. They just seem to have dropped that completely. Wherever they need her. Right. Um, so Briggs wants him to get his head in the fight. And Jensen agrees and seems to get on board here. I thought Briggs sounded decent. The rest, the other two, not so much. Um, but they've been given crap to work with, to be fair. So what are they going to do? Nathan Fraser starts to make his entrance. Grayson Waller attacks him before getting in the ring with a microphone. He mocks Fraser, says that it's the Grayson Waller show. Andre Chase and Brody Hayward walk down from the crowd as Waller is insulting them. Waller calls on Chase, but as they approach, Fraser comes out of nowhere instead with a shotgun dropkick, some other stuff, and then a nice suicide dive that pushes Waller up the ramp. Fraser and the Chase, you guys, shake hands as Waller lies on the ramp. Fraser's going to be a top guy. What an underwhelming spot on this roster to place this debuting Nathan Frazier, as I think you're suggesting by that comment. So he is immediately aligned with the ultimate comedy enhancement duo. So this is not great for Nathan Frazier's future, I don't think. Or like anyone coming from UK, to be honest. Right. Like we were talking about the loser lose match. Like, I, I mean, obviously they won't do as bad, but like it's not a good sign. The only hope is that you take, like, let's say it's Devlin, actually either of them, and put them in the North American scene because that scene's that's actually okay. That's their best hope, yes. Right. Um, Waller and Fraser might actually be a good match if that's the route we're going here, but Fraser with Chase, it makes no sense to me. I don't know. I, I imagine this is them saying, we don't think Nathan Fraser can cut a promo. We need to put him with someone who can talk. Yeah, it's odd. But anyways. Which, so he's in Chase U. He's yep. going to enroll. <laughs> exactly. He Maybe he got a scholarship. Maybe. Could be. I could see that happening. In two weeks, the NXT Women's Breakout Tournament begins, and we get a vignette for Bianca Corelli, who is Santino's is. Uh, kid and now known as Ariana Grace, I believe is the name oh, she's been given. Oh, okay. So I did see her because 
I didn't. I I didn't know. I thought she was going to use her name, so I was. Of course confused. not. Right. She says she's not afraid to take chances and will throw caution to the wind in this tournament. I thought she sounded okay, but if this is a tournament where it's talent that are not as good as who's already on this roster, it's going to be oh, awful. Oh, you are in for a fun time. I'm hoping it's like indie people who are actually good, but I don't know. Oh, that I is... have no idea. A stupid thing to think. Mackenzie talks to Tiffany a b- a Stratton about beating Saray last week. Tiffany cuts her off, complains about Saray pulling her hair during the match. Grayson Waller interrupts and wants to know who Nathan Fraser is. Stratton mocks Fraser's appearance, something about his hair, I think, and his accent. And Waller and Stratton seem to form a quick bond here and walk off together. And to be honest, this is a partnership that kind of makes sense to me, and I think they could be a really hateable heel duo if handled right and then i put in brackets as if um but i'm a little bit intrigued because this could be like like the same way i think sammy guevara and tay conti right could be a really good duo i think these two could work together too so yeah but i hope they don't make it a couple like that because no they would just butcher that i'm a little bit intrigued to see where this goes waller seems to be bouncing around right like with sanga for a week then gone now seems to be anyways we'll see there'll be a mixed tag team for two weeks and have some dissension and then right we then get a tag team match, which is Feroz and Leon. It's Ulisa Leon and Valentina. Valentina Feroz taking on Casey Cat and Zero. Nope, Katana Chance. So that's how we learned she had a sudden name change. And yeah, and that Kate was and funny because she just got put in the 2K DLC with Casey Cat and Zaro as her name. And so. the closest thing they get to addressing the name change at all here is we're told that Chance has the same athleticism but a different aggression level. That's the closest they come to saying, yes, we changed her name overnight. That's funny. Right? She's more. This version of her is more <laughs> aggressive somehow. Right. Oh, yeah. Um, so not much of note here. We get a decent missile drop kick from Leon, a military pl- press slam by Leon that was um, pretty impressive. Um, and said, oh, no, sorry. She gorilla pressed her own partner and then dropped her on top of Carter. That's what it was. I would just say the diving is more effective, but... But it was from higher up. Chance and Carter hit their cool 450 neckbreaker combo, which I do think is a sweet finishing move. They um, get the win after a blind tag. They hit that move in about six minutes. Totally fine match. Feroz and Leon actually got the majority of time on offense. was a bit of a surprise. So this match wasn't terrible. A decent little tag team match buried in the middle of some garbage. Um, Jensen, we find out, has been taken out backstage and Briggs is mad. I don't know where that's going, but it really doesn't come into play tonight. Kaylee Ray, nope, Alba Fire vignette. Oh yeah, that was that's brutal. She will resurrect her past. She is Alba Fire, and I just say sorry that you had to do this, Kaylee Ray. Whose name is Alba? Like whose real name is Alba? And as she's trying to say that this again, they're trying to do like this was actually her name somewhere before. She's got a new fire. So she's embracing this, anyways. Whatever, it's dumb. I Um, don't think so because I know she's been like Kaylee Ray for yes ages. So Legato Del Fantasma in what turns out to be a handicap match, I guess, because it's supposed to be Henley, Briggs, and Jensen, but Jensen's taken out. And my notes say Jack started, quote-unquote, watching here. So you showed I up for this. I did see a bit of this, you technically. Did. So Briggs and Henley dominate early, execute the Briggs and Jensen sliding punch thing that's so lame. Uh, Legato target Briggs' leg and isolate him for quite a while here. Henley and Lopez then have a sequence where they both miss kicks really badly. Remember that? Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. That I remember seeing. That was like, like really the double the, botch kick. so bad together. It really was. Both of them were so bad. Legato ends up hitting their finisher and pinning Briggs in under five minutes. I thought Henley shows good fire, like she like energetic and All stuff. All the fire. But it led to some sloppiness here. Uh, I guess the match was fine, but I don't know what the payoff is to Jensen being taken out, right? Is it mystery attackers again? And if so, that's just copy and pasting from the pretty deadly stuff that just happened, right? So they didn't really address it all other than obviously he didn't make it down to the match. So I don't know where they're going to go with this. I'm sure it's a direction I won't care about or won't like. But anyways, Mackenzie talks to Natalia and Lash Legend. What a What a pairing that is, eh? I know, you get... Cora Jade and Lions versus Ugh. Lash and Natalia. So, that is just brutal. So gross. Uh, Natty says she will break Cora Jade's leg next week um, and put the rest of the locker room on notice. She goes on to say she's already noticed Lash, and Lash says stuff about momentum and winning with Natty as momentum. a teammate. Momentum. And that's uh-huh. it. No comment on that. My new thing with NXT is no comment. I'm not going to say it was fine or whatever. It happened. 
Okay. Because we're moving on. Cameron Grimes heads to the ring in a suit. He's going to be watching the uh, Carmelo Hayes solo Sokoa match. And then we get Kiana, or Kiana, Kiana, I don't know, James, FKA. Because I'm like, she looks familiar. And then it turns out it's Kayla Inlay who's done a couple, like, enhancement matches. And it actually looked okay. I don't know who that is. So she's now, um, she's now, her, her character is like, I'm a businesswoman. I'm a corporate woman. She Was she the girl with the glasses? Yes. I thought she was supposed to be a nerd. No, she is relentless in the corporate world and in the ring. So we're going to find that out, I guess. She also says she's bringing sophistication to the breakout they tournament. She claimed that the, she used to work at WWE corporate. She, she has a good look, and I thought she actually did a decent job as enhancement. So we'll see. Um, we then get Solo Sokoa taken on your favorite wrestler, Trick Williams. Yay. My, my first note, they work each other's arms, dot, 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 exciting. NXT UK? Mm. Trick actually gets a bunch of time on offense in this one. Eventually, Sokoa fires up, dominates with strikes, corner splashes, and a Samoan drop. And then Sokoa hits his top rope splash for the win in about five minutes. And then after the match, Sokoa, long story short, accidentally super kicks Grimes. And that's about it. I thought it was a decent enhancement match. Nothing more, really. Don't have a lot to say about this show. Uh... Idris Anafe and Malik Blade are the Viking Raiders opponents tonight. And um, Anafe isn't worried about it, but Malik Blade is. So Anafe talks him, sort of gives him a pep talk, and says it matters what he believes. Sure. He asks Blade what he sees in the mirror. Blade says he sees a man with speed, power, heart, and a badass who ain't afraid of no man. So Blade runs out as Anafe says, let's go. And I don't know what it is, but I find something fun about these two. I quite enjoy them as this kind of naive baby face tag team so far. I don't think their delivery is great, but something about it works for me. I'm happy to say there's some youth on this show that are kind of clicking for me, and these two are. Um, Legato celebrate their win from earlier backstage. Santos says that last week Tony D'Angelo said he didn't know anything about those two goons that attacked. But tonight proves that Tony is a lowlife and a liar and that those two are clearly affiliated with him. And it's an eye for an eye. Oh, yeah. You get an extraction. Is it extraction Sweet. time? Uh, it's, we're nearing it for sure. Right. Uh, Viking Raiders taken on Blade and Inafe. Inafe jumps up and stands on Eric's back momentarily in an interesting little part here. Then we get a nice high knee by Eric. Irinagi into a knee strike by Eric. That look, I love Eric, man. I think he's. Or I almost. I had to, Ray Row. I actually had to erase Row because I wrote Row a few times. That's how long it's been since I've seen them. I've sort of gone back to like Ring of Honor sort of time with them. Or even NXT. Um. So they're, they hit their double team slam thing for the win in less than five minutes. They shake hands with the baby faces after, I guess, to sort of let us know their faces here too. And then the Creeds come to the ramp and talk trash from a distance, not on the microphone. So I don't know if it's because Anafe and Blade are new, um, but I thought the Raiders worked a pretty boring style compared to what I'm used to. And it might be just like, we have to kind of slow it down to work with these rookies, right? Um, they really didn't showcase much power or athleticism. They kind of kept it simple here. So basically an enhancement match where the Raiders, I didn't think, looked as dominant as they should have, but I guess they picked up a win at least. Wes Lee's doing a voiceover on this segment next. It shows images of him looking thoughtful as he's on the beach, mixed in with highlights of him in ring. He says he's all alone now, and he can either complain about it or knuckle up. What do you think he's going to choose? Knuckle up. He is going to knuckle up. Um... So I think they just kind of had to scramble to throw something together for this guy. And this is a pretty generic promo, but he did a fine job. It's a lot better than his like goofy, weird minions of Matt Riddle pothead sort of gimmick that he's been doing for a while. But I don't think they have many plans for him based on his first match as a single, but we'll see. <sighs> Tony D'Angelo cuts off McKenzie t and talks to Escobar. He introduces his goons and I already forget their names. I went back and looked it up. Um... Troy, Two Dimes, Donovan, and Channing Lorenzo, a.k.a. Stax. And one of them looks like he's about 16 years old to me. It's like it's this baby-faced, like, literal baby face, right. not like... Yeah. And he's trying to look, like, intimidating, and it's just like some teenager put on his dad's suit and hat and is trying to look tough. It made me laugh a little bit. Right. Um, Tony says he wants to sit down with Escobar at spring, spring break-in before Tony takes things into his own hands. And my only note was, I hate this. Uh, we then move on to Roxanne Perez taking on Mandy Rose. So the basic story here is Mandy is the powerful veteran champion and Roxanne is the plucky young rookie who just won't stay down. So we get a 
a thousand roll-up attempts here by Roxanne. She ends up biting Mandy Rose's finger and slamming her hand against the steps on the outside. We get a handspring twisting splash by Roxanne a bit later. A crossbody by Roxanne for two. Both women get up. Rose hits her high knee and pins Roxanne after about 10 minutes, this got. Wendy Chu shows up with a super soaker again, but toxic attraction escape um, up the ramp until Chu deploys... Um, what I my description I was like is this my note it is deploys a leftover gimmick from Jackass WrestleMania and pushes a button that releases like a cartoon net this is like Wiley e. Coyote and the Roadrunner kind <laughs> right. of thing so it drops a net onto Toxic Attraction and then they shoot Toxic Attraction with silly string because this is how adults behave I hate this so much that is oh, ridiculous so stupid um the match I guess was decent but why book I don't get we talked about this kind of off air. Why are you booking Roxanne, who's like a pretty major free agent signing, to lose in her second match? And you didn't have to put her in against Mandy Rose here. Right, you could argue like as a champion, but then also like why why do you have to book her against Put Mandy? her against Dolan and have her win Exa again. Right, exactly. So anyways, and Roxanne spent far too much time at the beginning of this just attempting roll-ups, all different types of them early on. Uh, things picked up a bit. Roxanne got to showcase some of what she can do. I don't think there's anything wrong with this match. It just didn't feel like a main event. There is a segment coming after, but this was the final match. So underwhelming as a main event, but Roxanne looked okay. Then we get a um, brief vignette for some 19-year-old. I think the name was Sloan Jacobs. She dreams big and is Why here. Why does that name sound familiar? She's here to become the youngest women's champion. So she'll win the black uh, the breakout tournament first and then go on to be the that name champion. Sounds super familiar. Sure. I don't know. I'm just a Sloan. It doesn't so then we get the main event segment, ugh, which is Joe Gacy walking to the ring alone. And I made that note because I was kind of like, where's Harlan been all this time? But I guess we now know, right? Yep. Um, he starts talking and the druids start to walk in slowly and they surround the ring. He's made strides, but he hasn't quite accomplished his goal. And he doesn't think that everyone has bought into his vision. He wants people commit to his vision willingly because after spring breaking, there will be no choice. Because of course, you have to buy into the vision of whoever's champion, I think is what he's saying. Like, we'll just have no yeah. choice. What's... That belt means we follow whatever he says. Yeah, so what would you say Braun Breaker's vision is? Um, he's just a tough fighting guy. You we know? gotta be tough fighting guys too. Take on all comers. Or we have to be tough and fight him. I don't know which way it works. <laughs> Could be. He says Breaker is not cleared to defend the title because of what Gacy did to him last week when he pushed him off the platform and we didn't get to see him land on a pile of pillows. We don't probably. even know if it's true if he actually like died or anything. Gacy will be crowned new NXT champion and the and the mold and clay of NXT will be hardened into the vision of how he sees the world. Rick Steiner, yay, comes out to some super generic rock music, says that Braun is in fact cleared and will defend his title. Gacy says that Steiner picked the worst possible time to come back, and the Druids hop up on the apron and surround Steiner. Ooh, Braun Steiner. Breaker's music hits, and of course he comes down and clears out the Druids, but does get taken out by Joe Gacy. The Druids line up basically on the ramp down towards the ring and pass the title down the line until Gacy gets a hold of it and holds it up over Braun's fallen body to end the show. Very similar to Devlin holding it up on NXT UK. Copy and paste. Um, so this wasn't very good, especially for a main event segment on a go home to what I think they're considering a special episode next week with break and whatever spring break in. Nothing really happened here. Braun's not here. Uh, yes, he is, but it doesn't matter since he gets taken out anyways. Um, so obviously, I don't think Gacy is winning this title match. Felt like they needed to fill one more segment heading into the match. This is the choice they made and the best thing they could have come up with. I thought it was pretty sad and uneventful. Sad that that's the best they got. Exactly. So on the plus side of this show, um, trying if to be there optimistic, is any. there was nothing that made me really angry, but I've just found the show incredibly boring. There was nothing of interest for me at all. At least most weeks lately, right? There's been a match or two that I'm like, yeah, that was a pretty good match. There's been a lot of me saying the opener and the main event were definitely watchable, right? And then a lot of garbage in between. 
This week, I don't think there was a single match that I would even slightly recommend to anybody. And the segments are almost never memorable. And that was the case again tonight. The final segment included, I don't think it was necessary or added anything at all. And since this is a wrestling show, there was not one good wrestling match. I'm not passing it this week. And none of the segments were even close to saving it from a failing grade. So it gets an F just in overall, like, again, nothing awful, but just like boring, 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 nothing anyone needs to see. Um, so Finally yeah, breaking you. It fails for me this week. It is, and I, I think unless something dazzles me and I see new directions being made off of Spring Breaking, I may be done after next week. So again, Ooh. if you really, really need me to keep covering this for you, I need to hear from you people. I need people to say, please keep covering it because I rely on you to get my NXT results or whatever. Because I, this, I'm not enjoying watching this show. It's been, I've, I think you could easily say I've given 2.0 a fair shake, right? Like I've more moved, than a fair shake, right? So, um, yeah, too it, much of a shake. It was bad. But anyways, that's going to move us into our final segment, which is where I think Jack has a bit of an update from the world of wrestling action figures and what we like to call figuring it out with Jack. You should speak now because I'm recording. Um, so there's <laughs> not a lot. They just randomly showed images for like one series. Yeah. Um, there's unrivaled nine images. Um, so that's kind of cool. There's thunder rose and like a uh, black and brown gear there's a lot she comes with like three pairs of hands which i feel like i don't see a lot anymore interesting um so that's cool that's from all out in 2020 yep which i find interesting because a lot lately i've noticed a lot of figures coming from all out 2020 because i hmm. a little while ago i got you know the long titan man i got right which is unrivaled five um that was all out 2020 um that oh, new kenny i i like best kenny best kenny um, that's all out 2020. Dustin Rhodes right here, right. all out 2020. Yep. Um, so that's c- kind of interesting, uh, just as a thing. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of cool. And that's the one with the face paint on her left side. Yeah. Of her face, and then there's a chase paint in this light, nice, like kind of light blue. I really like that color. It's pretty nice. Um, face paint right on the right side. She comes with like a cloth flag. That's kind of cool. It's like a half Mexico, half U.S. flag. I cool. Don't... She probably used that once. I don't remember when she. I think it. she did. Uh, Revolution twenty twenty one. This is from. So that's that's kind of recent actually. I find it interesting like how sometimes it's it's fairly recent attires and sometimes it's not. Right. It's kind of interesting. But so that's pretty cool. Um. Next we have uh Ricky Starks in kind of like a blue and green trunk. So that's pretty nice. He looks pretty cool. They all come with cards now. Like we're getting to the point where like they come with a few cards. So that's pretty cool. He's from what, like trading cards. Yeah, yeah. Like they come with a few cards now. Nice. Um, I think this is the first attire I've seen from Dark. This is from Dark, um, October 20th, 2020. So that's kind of interesting because I don't think I've seen figure come from Dark yet. Um, so that's cool. I like the Starks actually like out of this series. That's probably one of the ones I'd get. Um, there's Eddie Kingston with a way too dark beard. Mm-hmm. Um, he looks a little off, but I think he's still pretty good. He's from All Out 2021, uh, against Miro. That oh, remember nice. him? Cool. Where's that guy? I have no idea. But that's either. pretty cool. He's got like a grimace face and a straight face. So I think that's pretty nice. Um, next we get Powerhouse Hobbs. I'd actually would like to get the Hobbs too. Actually, I think Hobbs is one of the good ones here. Um, yep. He's got like, you know, like the face when he has like, he has like the lip up. The scowl. Yeah, he does yes. that and he has a straight face. I think he's actually pretty nice because I think some of the head scans in the series, they look a little too animated or like they're a little off. Right. But I think he's actually a pretty good one. Um, He's from Rampage Grand Slam against uh Punk, I think. So that's kind of cool. Um, I think that one's pretty nice. Then we have a cage in like a black and yellow or black and white and yellow. Cause you know, he has like, he does like the half and half color. Mm-hmm. I don't think his head scans are very great, but I'd still probably get it. Cause it's cage uh, rampage October 8th or 6th from 2021. It's kind of hard to tell, but uh, that's nice. Um, Like that's another thing where I'm like, the head scans aren't great, but and then there's Christian cage. Yay. Yeah. He has a grimace head. Uh, I, um, a straight face he's it's from rampage i think it may be from when you beat um kenny for the impact title not 100 percent sure mm-hmm. and uh i forgot to mention the rare edition one of 3000 ricky starks is from when he was mocking darby so he's got like his darby imitation look which oh, I nice think, i think it's kind of cool because that's not like the kind of thing he looked put good in the but yeah that was that's funny so i i like that um so that's pretty cool and then they there's some pre-orders like basic 133 there's reigns balor uh natalia austin and cedric alexander think alexander's the chase there's new two austin packs. as in austin theory or steve austin uh steve austin sorry. Oh, okay i was honestly um, unsure yeah um can't have two people named austin what are they thinking that's true um then there's the new two packs omos and aj 
uh, Hogan and Andre, Miz and Lashley. Then there's new Ultimates. So here's where it gets kind of funny. Mm-hmm. Is Ultimate Edition 14 is Roman Reigns, which we uh, we've seen um, in previews from Mania 38 weekend, and then Jeff Hardy, who is no longer who's in employed. AW. It looks like a early 2000s like a Russo's aggression Jeff Hardy. So I think that's interesting in itself. But then it gets more interesting with AEW Unrivaled Supreme uh, <laughs> Series One, which are basically their equivalent of Ultimate Editions, which I think is cool because Series Two will have the multiple pants Kenny. Right. Um, but Series One has Baker and Cody Rhodes. So they're releasing each other's yeah. property at this point. Forbidden Door guys, they're they're getting along. <laughs> the fine, Forbidden finally. Door has entered the figure world. Yeah, finally. they're finally getting along. So that's right. pretty nice. They're working together. Sure. Um, that is it. Awesome. Yeah. Well, that's going to bring us to the end of episode 93 of the FNS Wrestling Podcast. Appreciate any time you spend listening to us. If you want to contact us to let me know how you feel about me stopping NXT 2.0, possibly FNSWrestling at gmail.com, on Instagram at FNS underscore wrestling underscore podcast, or leave a comment on YouTube if that's where you're listening. I promise I will get back to you if you provide any feedback at all. Would love to hear from anyone. But we will definitely be back here next Saturday for episode 94. And until then, take care.